Our first item, oh, I'm sorry, roll call, Trish. Um, Mr. Vale is not present at the moment. Okay. Um, we have the introduction of the items by the superintendent, our cons consent agenda. Good evening, everyone. Uh, there's just uh, one item on the consent agenda, and that's the uh, minutes from the September 23rd, 2009 school committee meeting. Okay, I'd entertain a motion to accept the minutes of the September 23rd, 2009 regular meeting. Uh, Mr. Higgins. Uh, move to approve the uh, meeting minutes from September 23rd, 2009. Do we have a second? Second. Oh, Mr. Marchese, thank you. All those in favor? Okay, unanimous, Trish. Thank you. Thank you. Um, our next item of business is Student School Committee and Kellen Campbell. Hello. You're not singing tonight? I am later. <laughs> oh, good. I knew it. How did I know you'd be doing that? Good for you. Um, what is the musical that they're doing? Um, it's called Songs for a New World, and it's like a cycle of songs and scenes instead of the traditional musical. Oh, that sounds terrific. Great. Thank you. Um, yeah, did you have a report today? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, so the past few weeks have been full of activity at the high school. Uh, because October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, students have been showing their support by wearing pink shirts, and the volleyball team sold many dig pink t-shirts. The girls asked everyone to wear their shirts to school on October 5th, and will do so again on October 29th, as they face off against Burlington at home in the gym at 4 o'clock. All of our sports teams are doing very well this season, and many are hoping to make it to the postseason. In last night's game, the field hockey team already clinched a playoff spot. Last Friday was our annual homecoming dance. It was a huge success and everyone seemed to have a great time. The homecoming court was announced and this year's king was Richard Berry and the queen was Olivia Fuller. Over the weekend, Club WHS wrapped up their suitcases for kids drive on Saturday, October 10th. The drive was a huge success as Wilmington students and residents helped collect approximately 1,000 suitcases. This week at the high school is Spirit Week. Each day has a different theme and students dress up accordingly. Tuesday was class day, so each grade had its own theme. Freshmen had sports day, sophomores had career day, juniors had famous person day, and seniors had costume day. Today was Army Navy day or military day, so everyone came dressed up in their Army uniforms. Tomorrow will be retro day, and Friday is blue and white day, which will end in a pep rally where students will show off their school spirit. The cheerleaders and the WHS marching band will perform while the senior students host the rally. Also this week were the uh, auditions for the musical. Thank you. Great, Kellen. Thank you. It's always nice to have the update. Thank you so much. And uh, don't feel you have to stay because you probably have to go practice. Anyway, we wish you luck. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, next we'll have the superintendent's report. Uh, Mrs. Benton. Thank you. And I'm going to add two more items to the um, report this evening. Um, taking advantage of the fact that Mr. Tracy is here this evening, he's going to do a report on the Wildcat project. And also, I'd like to um, ask the school committee to consider, uh, and we can take an official vote at the next meeting, uh, closing kindergarten on December 8th, which is the primary election. Uh, day and we believe that they're going to that's going to be a very busy day because there are many candidates for Senator Kennedy's seat and um, believe that it would be safer to not have the kindergarten children in the building that day so I just wanted to add that uh, you have uh, in your packet this evening a personnel report in, in, which includes the um, resignation for true retirement purposes um, of head coach boys and winter spring track Bob Cripps, I want to um, thank him for all the work he's done over the years for the students at Wilmington High and um, wish him well. And he is an institution around here and has contributed greatly. So we thank him for all that he has done. Worked for us for 40 years. That was great. Thank you. If you would um, please invite Mary Palin, the head of food services, up to the table. She has a, um, uh, is going to talk this evening about promoting healthy choices. Um, as you know, um, ever since Mary arrived in Wilmington, she has been doing everything that she can to um, make us all healthier. 
and lunch is more attractive. Mary has uh, brought salad bars, fresh <laughs> vegetables, <laughs> fruit. A waiter. <laughs> <laughs> I'd also like to thank Mr. Um, vale for putting us on to Mary's latest, which is the kind of the reason that we were getting you to come here tonight. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, Mary, I'm going to ask you to sit behind the mic so okay. that they can hear you on TV. Okay. okay. I mean, you can stand to do your show and tell what we want to hear. They want to be able to hear you. Okay. Um, So thank you so much for inviting me tonight. Um, as you know, um, often when I come, I bring something with me. But it's really because I'm a visual learner. So for me, it's easier to show than sometimes to explain. Um, being, I've been here for three and a half years. And I think we've had a steady growth of improving the lunches with um, more fruits and vegetables. And um, there's, <clears throat> excuse me three ways I really believe in doing that. Um, one is through presentation, one is through demonstration, and one is through variety. And um, by doing all three, I think you really get the children and the staff to really partake in taking more choices. Um, currently, at the middle school, we are bringing in, I think, about 1,000 pieces of fresh fruit a week. Um, that's not including all the salads, all of the um, canned fruits and vegetables, all the juices, um, and um, or fresh vegetables that we cook. That's just apples and oranges. Um, when I first started in um, here three and a half years ago, we probably brought in 250 to 300 servings of fruit a week. Um, some school districts present food like this. And you, this is where I wanted to get up and kind of show you, but, and I'll do that after. Okay, so it's just, actually they put, my, some of my staff did this for me nicely today, um, but they put in two different kinds of apples, um, Macintosh and Delicious. But actually, if you go to some other school districts, they'll just put in Macintosh or just Delicious or just green apples, and that's it. Well, I like Macintosh, so when the green apples are off it, I'm not all that impressed. And I'm not impressed by the bowl either. The presentation, you know, it's not very attractive. Does anybody not agree? <laughs> okay. Okay. So, this is what we do. And you can see this almost um, varying degrees at every single school. And if you look in this basket, we have fresh pears, we have Macintosh, we have delicious apples. Um, the, the Macintosh are local. The golden ginger apples are local. The California raisins, the bananas, and there's oranges. Those are all the choices that are in there. So there's about eight different choices in here just alone. It doesn't stop there, though. Just so you know, my own son, who's 10, came to Wildwood with me one day last year because I live in New Hampshire, so we have different days off, and they happen to visit, and he's doing this. And I said, what are you doing? And he said, I'm counting the choices. There's 12 choices. And these are kindergartners. I'm in fourth grade and I only have one choice. And I went, okay. <laughs> so then on top of that, depending on which school you go to and the preference of the schools, right here I have two different choices of juice. But at some schools on some days, there's four different kinds of juices that they can pick and choose from. These are apple slices with cinnamon on them. Sometimes we top them with whipped cream, too. And those are, I took from the middle school today, right off the line. These are cheddar cheese sticks that we put, we wrap up and we put in the, on top of the fruit baskets as well for the kids to take. These are, uh, dependent on the school, because some schools don't do this, but this is a date, raisin, almond mixture that we get. These are dried cranberries. I mean, this is just like a, a small selection of what we're doing every day. Pineapples, small salads, and then carrot sticks with ranch dipping sauce. So this is how we present it, and it's all done. I grab this tray rather than, we usually use like a small plastic clear tray, which is very attractive. Um, but seeing as I was walking around, that I was afraid it would slide off and someone might wear the ranch dressing. So I decided to go for the contained tray today. Um, that's the presentation. That's the variety. 
demonstrations is why I, I sort of got invited. Um, last year, um, many of you I'm sure are aware, is that I visit every school and I do fresh stir fry. I wear a chef's coat, I throw on a baseball hat, um, and I do fresh stir fry on a small hot plate with a pan and all the sauces and the veggies. And um, the students actually watch me do it. So that it takes away the stigma or the unknown of what is school lunch about. The only difference is I don't do it in a little tiny pan. We do it in a big giant pan in the back. So they got to see me do it. it I did it at every school. Um, one child tries it. And then it's what I call the um, good peer pressure because Johnny tried it, then Sally tries it, and then Susie tries it. Um, the faculty also enjoy it. I, I actually got a comment from one teacher at the West that could I just come over every night to her house and just do that and she'd be so happy. Um, this year I'm doing Caesar salads. So the students, I did it last week at Woman Street. I make Caesar salads um, just in a giant bowl clear so they can see what I'm doing and I'm pouring the dressing and they're watching me right in front, just like you are. I'm just mixing up the salad and everything and I'm serving them fresh Caesar salad as they're coming through the line. Um, we shucked corn this year. We got um, local fresh corn. Um, Mr. Shaw was very nice, and Mr. Ferriero to have me at their schools and help me. And we, we um, enticed all the fourth graders to come down and help shuck all the corn for the entire school district, uh, with the exception of the high school and middle school. But all the elementaries in the, in the um, kindergarten buildings had um, fresh corn that we shucked the day before. And it was very interesting because as surprising as you might believe, many children have never shucked corn before. I, we, that was one of the first questions. And one of the other things I said to them, the, uh, you know, I'm the head lunch lady, that's how I refer to myself. It's easier with, you know, fourth graders. And um, they said, yes, you cooked the stir fry last year. And I'm like, okay, great, they know that I am. Good, good. I'm the lady who brings food. So that's, you know. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what I'm doing. I'm, I'm trying to keep it so that they see what we're doing. It's not scary, there's plenty of choices. I'm sure at home, all of you have choices. You don't have just green apples in your bin, at least I hope not, fresh fruit. You have grapes and you have watermelon and you have, and we actually did that last spring. I, I went comp lunch with my whole staff and said, you can have watermelons, you can have kiwis, you can have grapes, you can have strawberries, fresh strawberries, you can have, and it was all in season and they said, okay, I'll take six of this, seven of that, and. And so the kids some days came into school and had strawberries every day and grapes every day and watermelon and cantaloupe and kiwis and so that's it. And she does all this. And the account remains in the black, which is really concerning. Really good. I just want to add two things that Mary didn't talk about. Mary also serves on the wellness committee for the um, for the town and schools and is a great addition to that committee. And also last year, she um, actually had a display at the health fair. Unfortunately, the timing that day we had, was a busy day and uh, we all couldn't get to, down and taste some of what Mary was uh, cooking that day, but has um, volunteered um, on town committees as well. She's an incredible asset to the school system, and Thank I you. think she's doing a fabulous job. And she was recently in the town crier, and I love the fact that the Wilmington Food Service Program was recognized in a National Food Service magazine yep. last June for demonstrating the cooking of the fresh stir fries. Mm -hmm. Congratulations Thank to you. you. That was fantastic. Mr. Vail, did you have any? Yes, um, okay. When you procure food, I mean, is it... Do you go through a national um, catering service, or I mean, when you got the local corn, I mean, how do you how do you actually pull that off? And are there ways to for us to try and promote? Wilmington that? is a. Um, I'm actually we are a district that I put us in um, when I came on board. We are actually a school that is part of the Mass Farm to School program. Um, so they send us out information. They send us out packets of information. Um, because of the vendors we work with on a regular basis, they provide us with um, um, cost of fruit and produce out of Boston as one of my purveyors. They send me a list of all the local things they have weekly and what's on special, or they might send me an email saying, oh, lunch bunch grapes are on sale this week and things like that. So um, that's one way. I'm also part of um, the Metro North Collaborative, so I work with um, 20 other food service directors um, for all our purchasing. Um, for everything we do as well. 
So something like the corn comes up, it just comes across as an email, like special this week, we have all this corn coming well, in. I knew that farm to school week was coming, so I was already calling around to farms, and then I put my local produce guy on it, and I said, I want local corn. I need, we need to get some. Stop making phone calls. And we called the place in Hayroll, we called the place in Drake. They ended up having to get some um, just over the border in Connecticut. Um, but it's still New England Road, because everyone around here was already, it was out. All the, all the places around here for that week, because a lot of the schools do it, do the same thing. They either shuck corn or they bring in butternut squash um, or do acorn squash or they do something that's local. Um, they were already, everyone was out of the corn. What I see tonight, all the fruits is great. I've never had all this when I was in high school. Now, what about the other snacky foods that parents don't like? Has that been starting to wean wean off and, and not as much on the line for the for we especially don't. in the elementary grades because young kids really don't know yeah. what the best thing is eating. They see a cookie, they're gonna go for a cookie over an apple. All we don't um, nothing is included on the lunch as like along those lines except for occasional like a holiday cookie um, with the lunch or um, the high school and the middle school. Occasionally, when we're doing like a deli bar or we're doing a, um, a roll-up bar in, um, in a couple weeks at the high school, um, it's reduced fat Cape Cod chips. We have snack items that are sold a la carte. They're all A-list, which is from Mass Action for Healthy Kids. They provide a list to all the school district directors, so long as you want to comply, which we do. Um, and anything we sell falls under that list. Okay. And it's all up to the parents. and. We let the parents do the parenting. If they want to allow their child to purchase a bag of reduced fat cheeses um, or a low fat ice cream, that's strictly up to them. So the parents have the option to prevent oh, their yeah. kids from buying all this. Okay, yep. yeah, that's great. Yep. No, that's good. That's good. I think more parents should know that they have that option. Yeah, so. I put it out there actually all the time when I send out um, things to them, whether it be in my newsletters, sometimes even the schools do it within their newsletters, or um, um, different things that I provide the parents with at the beginning of the year to explain the lunch program. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Dr. Quick. And you were saying that this is also in the elementary schools too, that the parents have that? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Every day I get, I receive emails from parents saying, can you limit this or can you do that? That's the one great thing, well not just one, but one of the many great things that our online POS system does. Every parent, once they set their child's account, can look and see what they're purchasing every day. And then can email me or contact one of my managers or supervisors and say, you know what, I only want Johnny to buy an ice cream on Friday. Can you, can you put that note on their account? And we do. We've had notes on accounts long before I came here three and a half years ago. Oh, well, a lot of positive comments have been said. I just, when I saw this in the packet, I said, you know, I have to just jump on board because I have just heard such great things from the staff and from different people about this, um, just from the usability of the POS and for the parents to be able to see, um, but also the variety and just the fact that, let's face it, I mean, I don't know about everybody sitting around here or even in the room. When I go to Market Basket, my food costs have gone up exponentially, and I'm not buying a lot. So the fact that you can put a variety with wheat and with vegetables okay. and fruit and milk um, to a young man or young woman at the cost that we do, it's just irreplaceable. And just the spirit and the enthusiasm and the, the smile that goes along with the service is, is huge. It, it You can really tell that you really enjoy what you're doing and it really cascades through the different schools and it makes principals and teachers and, and kids want to participate. So I think that's huge. And then and along with that, being on the community service and then also having our officially voted fundraiser that's around walking, you know, it's it, like the synergy among all the programs that we have and that everybody's kind of tied into a cohesive plan for the community, for the kids. So I think that's nice. Have you chosen your costume yet? for the walk for fitness. Okay. Which vegetable is it going to be? No. Oh, vegetable. <laughs> I have been at times. I know you have. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't being a part of this one. Yeah. That's fantastic. 
I just think it's great. It's, really in, it's, it's contagious. The spirit is it contagious. Is. It really is. Thank you very much. Well, ironically yeah. enough, my grandson was talking with his mother today, and they were in two separate schools. And they were going, when, when I came into the room, they were going back and forth on who had the better lunch. And they were going through their lunches for the week. I could, I, I'm like, you're talking about the lunches? And they were like, yes, because he's, he's eating lunch. So very exciting that you've got first graders, you've captured first graders, and you've captured teachers, which is, which is really wonderful. Thanks, Mary. Thanks. Thank, Thank you very wow. much. I'm going to leave the basket of fruit healthy self so you can enjoy some fresh fruit. Okay? The attractive basket or the normal? The <laughs> 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 it's the same apple. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Mary. Yeah. That was great. <laughs> Um, Thank you. Next thing in the report is uh, enrollment projections. Uh, last year, as you can see, I, I had projected 3815 students. We actually had 3857, uh, and, and we were off by 42. However, as you know, the one group that we cannot um, predict because they're not born when we're doing projections is mm -hmm. kindergarten and there were 31 additional kindergarten students this year mm -hmm. I think all at mm -hmm. the Wildwood School mm -hmm. and um, so we're off only by 11 students so I'm pretty pleased with our projections they seem to be very stable too last Wednesday I had the pleasure of being at the Massachusetts uh, board the board of the Massachusetts School Building Authority when they invo voted to invite Wilmington School District to collaborate with the MSBA in conducting a feasibility study for the high school. This is very exciting news for Wilmington. What does this mean? This means that the next step will be that we will sit down with the MSBA and talk about um, the, the whole process of a feasibility study and hiring a project manager and um, meet with the selectmen to um, actually what this brings us to is one step closer as, as to whether we will be building a new or renovating this building. Um, it, it's very exciting times for Wilmington. The town manager presented uh, this to the selectmen last night and they would like us to um, pick out a date in November that we can go um, meet with them at one of their meetings to talk about um, the process. Oh, okay. I will be in touch with the MSBA next week to find out the official next steps, but I did outline them mm -hmm. um, in, in your memo, so um, I'm pleased that, uh, in the notes from the whiteboard, that uh, we were chosen. Well, any comments, Mr. Marchese? Yes, um, there, there are three things that the letter indicated that we must do. Um, have, have, have these things already been started, or I guess before anything happens, be, with the feasibility study, there's three steps that the town needs to take before we do that. That's what we will discuss it with the selectmen. Um, okay. You know, we have a capital maintenance plan in place now. In fact, um, Catherine Craven, the executive director, at the meeting on that Wednesday when she was presenting the schools, actually commented on the um, the maintenance at Wilmington High School and commended us for that. Now, I don't want to give anyone the idea that because we have high maintenance, you know, great. Um, to, the maintenance program is terrific that we don't there's not a need for a new high school she also said however they have we have old systems in place and we need to look at um, making decisions around that yeah. no, I just want to make sure in case you need mm -hmm. any help getting some of this okay. stuff through or whatever you know if you need support from the committee um, you know because I'd, I'd love to see this mm -hmm. go forward I just don't want to have it delayed any further so thank you yeah. and the, any other comments no. okay in your packet is also the professional development plan for the district. As you know, state law requires that this be on file, that we um, provide opportunities for our, our teachers to be able to um, take courses uh, and uh, meet their uh, individual professional development plans in order for their uh, recertification every five years. I want to go out of order because I know that Dr. McGinn plans on, we plan on having the report of results and then the school improvement plans. Can we invite um, Mr. Tracy, Mr. Tracy up to the table? Sure. To, I yes, Mr. Tracy, please join us. Thank you. If you recall, um, one of the meetings, previous meetings, we talked about a, a, the, the CHNA grant that we received. Um, 
we thought we'd take the opportunity with Mr. Tracy being here tonight to talk a little bit about the Winchester, yeah, Winchester, Wilmington High School Substance Abuse uh, Project. Mm -hmm. Mr. Tracy. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for inviting me. The um, Wildcat Project was the brainchild of our assistant principal, uh, Deb Deacon, and our uh, head, head nurse, um, Doreen Crow. They worked together at the end of last year in response to a uh, rather large increase of students um, being found on, on, on property at school events under the influence of alcohol or drugs, um, got together and, and really put their heads together to try and figure out ways to attack this and found that through the CHNA grant they were able to um, write um, a grant related to substance abuse projects uh, for a single community. So we had uh, sat down, discussed some of the issues, some of the ways to attack it over the summer. Uh, late midsummer, we, we found out that we received six thousand uh, dollars in the grant, uh, which is uh, covers most of the projects that we had outlined within the grant, including um, a number of speakers for each of the uh, classes: freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. We have uh, met with our substance abuse um, task force, if you will, that to discuss all the issues related. N n number of uh, facets of that include uh, people from the community, people from the Middlesex uh, Sheriff's Department uh, to help us to work on uh, some alcohol education programs. Uh, one of the flaws that we found in our own policy is that we didn't want kids to go, if they got caught under the influence of something, to end up at an NA meeting or an AA meeting. We felt that was kind of the extreme. We were, we, we felt that it was uh, more appropriate to, to kind of scale it down and educate uh, kids in more of a classroom setting, three or four to one or, or five to one. Um, so in conjunction with the Sheriff's Department, we were able to put together a program that will include um, uh, the Sheriff's Department and the School Department working together to uh, present an educational program for parents and kids that may find themselves um, caught up in the policy. Uh, as I said before, we had a number of, of uh, speakers that we put together. Uh, we're also looking at the possibility of putting together, um, <clears throat> excuse me, policy to present to you uh, in the near future related to breathalyzers um, at school events, uh, investigating options for um, equipment and breathalyzers at, at school events, and, and certainly that's a discussion we'll have along the way, but part of the project of what we see as uh, um, an increase, dramatic increase over my six years in the number of students who are partaking in, um, you know, substance use before, um, during, and, and sadly after, too, uh, many of the events. So um, this is a combination project that we hope will help us to attack it from a multiple um, a number of angles um, and also to be able to get parents involved, kids involved, and the school side involved in, in conjunction with the outside agency of the Middlesex Sheriff's Department. We think it will be um, one of the stronger uh, community responses and we hope to work with other communities. We've had discussion related to um, the education program being kind of a moving program where in November it would be in Wilmington, in December it would be in another community and if you had kids that were uh, caught up in, in a drug or alcohol offense, they would go to that particular program that month. Um, so we, we kind of pull in other communities and, and, and share it a little bit of, um, and try and work together with different ideas. There are a ton of ideas out there, so we're just trying to pull as many as we can together and get the, uh, the school kind of on the map with, with our um, policy, but also to help work with our students and parents. Such a serious matter. Thank you. Do we have any questions, Mr. Marchese? Uh, Mr. Tracy, is this only geared towards the high school or is this going to reach out to the middle school as well? Currently, it's the high school. We need to get the project started at the high school level, but um, just in the last meeting we had last week, we talked about reaching out to Mrs. McMiniman and getting them involved because certainly mm -hmm. um, high school age kids have siblings that are middle school age kids that tend to blend, if mm -hmm. you will, at different events and things like that. So we want to be able to spread our wings once we get it off the ground. Is there any type of peer leadership program with the high school and working with the elementary kids? Because I was involved in a program like that in high school where we went down to elementary and mm -hmm. we talked about drugs and alcohol and, yes, and all the do. bad stuff. The, the Students Against Destructive Decisions group does a, um, a combination of, of events at the west and the north 
they do um, skits, they develop their own skits, they go down and, and present the skits to the kids and, and talk with them about substance abuse and issues related to peer pressure and things like that. Great, so, thank you. Yeah. Ms. O'Connell. First of all, thank you very much uh, for the overview. Do you have preliminary project timeline when this would be up and running? Do you have a, a goal date in mind? It will, it, it's, it's t well, technically up and running. It's, it's a matter of hitting dates when, right now we're setting up our speakers and trying to turn our, hone them into a particular date, um, working with, within um, some pretty tough guidelines for some of these speakers mm -hmm. to get them in here and give them a, a time slot and give them the things that they need. Uh, so that was our first step to try and get all of those nailed down. We're supposed to have all that done by next week. Um, and then when we meet again in two, two and a half weeks, um, we're going to put together the next phase of the project with the Sheriff's Department. We find out the preliminary stages tomorrow um, for, that, for that program to work in conjunction with them, and then we'll move on to actually putting it in action. Okay. Um, just respectfully requested if there's anything that the school committee could attend or even pop in on, Absolutely. you know, I'd like to know about that. And then if I could kindly ask through the chair if this could be added, um, you know, even if it's just in summary to the committee, a monthly update, um, that we could get a monthly update on the progress of this program. Mm -hmm. Please. Definitely. Anyone else? Can I? Uh, yes, Mrs. I, I just want to um, reinforce what Principal Tracy said a few minutes ago about the increase in um, our students using alcohol and drugs in the p past six years. I too have noticed the increase, and we are really working very hard to send a very strong message to all the students in Wilmington that. We're not going to tolerate it, and they're going to get it hurt. And we don't want to see anyone's lives lost. I saw too many of lives lost in my previous districts, and we are going to be, be really vigilant about trying to get the word out to all our students that it's just not acceptable at the middle or high school level to um, be using drugs no. or alcohol. I think, oh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Tracy. Thank you. The, the, the other thing to remember is we're not getting rid of any of the other things that we do. Um, many of you remember at the end of the year we do all the little pieces with the seniors and the juniors uh, pre-prom activities. Um, we're still going to do that. We're still going to do the mock uh, crash. We still want to be able to, to have those open dialogues with our kids. And, and now we want to get our parents involved by having mandatory meetings to say we want all parents and kids to be there because we think it's got to be a community culture change. It, it is. Um, um, getting dangerous and, and I tell the kids every you know every year I meet with them before the prom and say you know I stay up every night before the at, during the prom when the prom the kids go home I'm still awake and, and they ask why and it's because you sit there and wait to watch that news report um, because you don't want to lose a kid for something crazy especially at you know kind of s such an, an exciting time of the year um, so it, it's one of those cultural values I think we all have to push hard to be able to get this community involved um, many years ago, we had a little bit of a, um, a presentation that was done at the middle school related to drugs and alcohol. I think we had 16 parents show up. Um, we need to change that. We need to make sure that all uh, the people that we can get involved are involved, including members of the school committee, and certainly invited to any and all of the events. It's, it's one of the things that we appreciate your support, and I think the community sees that um, it's important to all of us also to make sure our kids you know, have a good time, get a good education, stay alive. Um, and, and to be able to move on to, to their future goals and aspirations. Many years ago, the um, I hate to say how many years ago, um, when I was with the high school PAC, the PAC and the police department got together with the high school administration. And the one thing that did come out of that was um, um, parents, parents were really concerned, but the one thing that came out of that was designated drivers. And it's one thing that I heard through the years has stuck. Here that um, so of course whenever my children were driving I was like yay, so, <laughs> but um, it's it been it's been an ongoing problem. I think one of the key elements that we never addressed enough that you're addressing is parental involvement. I think having the parents come to your um, pre-prom assemblies and be a parent, not a pal. I love that. I, I think that maybe 
maybe that's the twist that we never got because it's there have been other people along the way who have worked on this issue I mean I think the town is continually I think the uh, high school is consistently working on it and you, you get so frustrated and you say how do you get the message across that um, and you feel sadly that uh, to think that it had would have to go down to the middle school feel sadly is life that bad at this point that um, the kids are are involved in this it's very discouraging but um, I feel very hopeful with your pro program here it's excellent and um, like Miss O'Connell I'd really like to be interested informed of when you have in these programs dr. quick um, mr. Tracy one of the questions I have is especially from the Bill Ricker House of Corrections in a program like this um, back a long, well, a long time ago, I worked with the Supreme Judicial Court in Massachusetts, um, and I remember the statistics were staggering about 80% of arrests and indictments ha were involved with um, drug abuse and alcohol abuse. I don't know if there's information from something, you know, a place like the Billerick House of Correction to give to parents and kids because we, we're so, you know, we really get the word out there. We try to get the word out there about drinking and driving, but the other, there are so many other things that can happen under the influence in addition to that. Um, and like I said, I was wondering if there's any information that you could get from a place like the Billerick House of Corrections to give to the parents and the kids to show them. It doesn't just, you know, there's a big percentage of kids who drink and um, are under the um, influence of drugs that now then they become adults and they do that and they're more likely to lead to these issues. So I, I think it'd be good to try to disseminate that kind of information also. Yes, Mr. So, but that's one of the, the more important pieces, I think, because last year what we did was we brought two inmates in from the uh, Bill Ricker House of Correction to speak to the, the kids before the prom probably the largest impact I've ever seen with a group because these guys were 20 and 21 mm -hmm. both killed their friends driving and both a typical teenager they were just your average guys you know going to school playing sports doing things uh, they showed up in in their prison attire and and certainly uh, I think that has you had a huge impact because we really had a, a, a nice atmosphere in the prom a very different atmosphere than I've seen in the past and kids took that more seriously than some of the other things that we do but I think the statistics are easy to get they're out there I worked uh, 10 years in corrections myself seen it done you know been there done that mm -hmm. but uh, there there are certainly uh, tons of statistics we can get even from our own police department even the number of kids that are in the 16 to 18 year group right now they're losing mm -hmm. their licenses for till the 20 21 we, we have we, we can show statistics related to that um, within with and without uh, alcohol and drug involvement I, I, just to, I think that's wonderful that you had you know you see on the news you see the you know the pictures and it's almost stereotypical of what oh you expect but when you see somebody boy that that could that looks that could look just like me you know and and when you see that I think it just really hits home a lot more than what kids stereotype as to what they think a you know drug addict might look like or something like that so I think that's great I think on behalf of the school committee too mr. Tracy we could fail you know fairly say that um, we work together on the policy and that's our role in this is the policy and we stand by our policy and um, I know there's been some changes in policy since last year to this year and we're constantly reviewing them with your help and um, your suggestions and so I, I think we can easily say that um, you have our support when you follow the policy for sure I'll let you know that okay so and if you, I know that if you needed to change it, you'd bring it to us and we'd change it. But we st we would stick by our policy. Um, Mrs. Duffy. Um, so, so the high school received a a grant for six thousand dollars to develop a substance abuse program, and that's what you're talking about. You've been working on with the high school, and that's what some of these suggestions are here. Yes. So, um, when do you think a final um, you know, uh, more developed uh, timeline, goals, benchmarks, that kind of thing may be together. I kind of like trying a few things out now. Yep. Um, and um, what might be the timeline for that? Um, s some of it is in place already. 
Uh, we have worked with uh, a number of local agencies to try and track down speakers and things like that, but our November meeting of the Substance Abuse Committee is really meant to nail down some of the specifics uh, to get ready, if you will, for those prom seasons and the times that that stuff uh, really starts to ramp up. Uh, we also want to be able to work with our athletes and, and our student athletes and get them involved in kind of the big loop too. So all that stuff got to kind of move monthly. I think you'll see this thing grow as the year progresses um, and in, in, in many cases only because we're going to shift with what we can do with our with the community, what we can you know get involved, uh, get the community involved in, and, and get our kids um, as much information as possible throughout the year. But part of the grant is that you probably have done grants before, where you have to lay out all of your program. We've done that kind of in advance, and then you have to go through each uh, step of the way, document all of the things that you've done related to the grant for a final report. So there will be a final report that will come to you also related to. Uh, the grant and all of the things we'll do each month. We're going to try and do things uh, throughout the school year. Yeah. I'm just, you know, it's uh, developing a program that is Wilmington and for Wilmington, and so it's kind of uh, difficult for me because this just came to us today, um, and it's difficult for me to see this right now. I'm kind of a little bit overwhelmed. Um, it seems a little, I, I know it is very good things. These are very good things. Um, you know, as teachers, we, you know, a lot of us as teachers, there's a ton of things when someone says you'd like to do this, there's a ton of things you can come up with, but then there has to be an organized plan for it, and I can't, that's the piece that I, I haven't seen, but it's it's on file someplace, um, and so I think kind of more developed, uh, better a presentation to us. And I know you wanted to get this to us because it's a timely manner. Um, I appreciate this. This is a good thing. And you've mentioned the policy, um, Mr. Quint, Mr. Vale, and myself are on the subcommittee, the policy subcommittee, and we um, that is one of the items that through the district has come up. Um, for review. Um, it'll be something all the administrators will take a look at, all the principals will take a look at as, as part, one of the policies for the uh, alcohol and drug, um, the sheriff's department and several others. So again, it's something, the policy we've been looking at for several months now and we'll continue to because nothing as dramatic and severe and as important to the community as this will be done too quickly. Um, so we want to make sure that it's the right thing for this community. And so all the players involved, which the, all the departments, will have a say in what makes uh, the best policy for the community. I, I think Mrs. O Ms. O'Connell's suggestion of us doing a monthly report will answer the questions, Joan, and I'll work with the high school and bring something forward next month. I, I, I know what you would like, and I, I think they have it. We just have to put it down on paper. I know. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Mr. Marchese. Uh, Mr. Tracy, if this is successful, and hopefully, and I believe it will be, is this something you're going to try to implement every year going forward? And I know this year it's being funded by a grant, but if not, will this be something you'll be looking for funding for for the following years and to try to keep this program alive? Yes. Okay. And I think, I think we have to look at uh, those, those grant opportunities as, as they come up. We have other... Um, opportunities that we think will come up later in the year to help us w to kind of extend this into next year. Um, things related to the Mothers Against Drunk Driving, the, the SAD group that we have, they have opportunities that will come up. So we're, we're going to try and take advantage of any uh, fiscal opportunity we can. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank Tracy. Excellent. And the last... Um, Piece of my report is the report on results. I'd like to turn, ask you to invite the principals up and turn the meeting over to Dr. McGinn. Oh, I'd be glad to. Um, we'd appreciate it if you, I don't know what we'll do with our little baskets. We'll have to move them backwards, I guess. And um, Dr. McGinn, all of you. No, we can't vote tonight. No, I just mentioned it. We're going to vote the next meeting. Thank you, Mrs. Duffy. Pass them. I thought they were going to pass the basket. Those raisins looked awfully great. <laughs> Good. 
Before Dr. McGinn begins, I just want to acknowledge because it's um, her first official meeting as head teacher at the Wildwood, Aaron Healy, and although you knew him um, from a different school, now principal of Wooden Street, Joel Sanderson. Thank you. Welcome all tonight. We're really happy to have you. We appreciate your sitting through the meeting and um, your discussion that we'll be having. So, um, Dr. McGinn. Thank you very much. Um, it's customary for those new school committees, new school committee members. It's customary at this time of the year to uh, invite the principals and the head teachers to the meeting. And uh, prior to talking about goals for the uh, coming year, uh, to give a progress report on the goals that were set in last year's school improvement plan. So that's the context in which uh, this report was written, and. Uh, I think that, uh, as you'll see in some of the uh, slides on the school improvement plans, the superintendent makes it clear that uh, she expects the goals that are articulated uh, in the school improvement plans are measurable, that people are held accountable. And um, so uh, without any further ado, I think what, what we'll do is if we can go in ascending order grade-wise on this report, and then start with the high school in the uh, school improvement uh, plan for the coming year. So I'll turn it over to uh, the principals of the uh, Shashin and Boutwell School and also uh, the uh, Wildwood and Woburn Street Schools. Okay. All right. Good evening. Um, we're, Aaron and I are going to report on our goals for the um, 0809. Um, the first goal that we had um, was really around curriculum, specifically science. Um, we had just um, started a science program and um, we wanted to integrate it uh, with, in a more meaningful way with our other curriculum pieces. Um, and the teachers felt that the initial um, training that they had didn't really answer the questions and didn't really give them any uh, formal instruction. So that was our charge um, for this goal. And what we did in the um, 0809 was, um, thanks to Mr. Ferdet, um, he was able to um, get us a, a wonderful speaker, uh, Jeff Winnerker from Wheelock College, and he presented a workshop for the teachers. Um, and he utilized our current science program. And what he did is he provided the teachers with lots of ideas around um, centers and activities. Um, and then during our CIT time, the teachers took it upon themselves to develop a pacing chart. And they also developed some cross-curricular activities um, to go along with the science program. And we always kept the parents involved. We did it through um, our websites, we did it through newsletters, um, and most importantly, inviting them into the classrooms to volunteer and to see the program in, in progress. Um, and we, probably the culmination of all of this work and time <coughs> and effort um, was a science night. And we did that at the Wildwood School in May of 09, and the Wildwood teachers, along with the Boutwell teachers, um, set up a series of workstations, and parents and children came through the stations and actually saw the, the curriculum in progress. And it was wonderful. It was very well received. So they did a lot of work, and uh, I think now we have a really firm grasp on our science program and a real direction for it. All right, and that brings us to our second goal, which centered around um, enhancing student learning through technology, which we felt was extremely important, as we know that technology is the way of the future, and it's essential that we start as young as the kindergarten level. So <clears throat> last year was our first year that the kindergarten students actually had a um, structured computer program during the day for a half hour. Before the half hour program, we had 15 minutes, and the teachers felt as though that wasn't enough time for the students to actually get what they needed during um, the computer lab time. So we went to a full half hour session for each class in the computer lab. It's run strictly by parent volunteers, which is wonderful, headed up by uh, Mr. Tavernese, who has done an outstanding job 
uh, arranging age-appropriate websites and basically a curriculum for the students to work on that both um, enriches and supports the curriculum that goes on in the classroom on a daily basis. All of his websites, um, both Sandy and I have seen, we're now consistent across the, the uh, district as far as what the websites are that the students are using. Um, <clears throat> we also have a lot of teachers who are now using the computer lab during unstructured computer time, so using it to create classroom books um, and also integrating um, the computer lab during any th thematic units that they're using, as well as integrating the smart board um, into some of their classroom lessons at the kindergarten level, which has been uh, fascinating for me to see at um, such a young age. And we're going to actually, we'll get to that, but we'll, we're going to continue on with this school for next year as well. Thank you. you know what, I was just thinking that I think the easiest way to do this is because it's so, um, we have the different sections. I'm going to, after um, the presentation for this section, then we'll see if anybody has any questions or comments. And then when we go on to the next schools, we'll do that. I think that'll be easier so people don't have to remember from far away what you said. <laughs> so, um, so bless you. Yeah, bless you. Okay. So does anyone have any questions for the kindergarten or thing? See, I say that because I do. I just have a couple. Um, one of them was, I'm wondering, you, you brought up about the new books and the old books in science. And I meant to ask this when we, when we did our curriculum renewal. Um, do we sometimes keep some of the old books and work with, work with the materials in there and use them as a, a, an actual resource? So I didn't know in the science, once the teachers got um, Jeff uh, Winokur, um, once he spoke to them and everything, did they go on to the new series or did they also still keep some of the old series? Well, we really well. never had um, a series as, as such because we were half day. So that the Harcourt program oh, was right. the first. And okay. um, what he did was he sort of gave us the activities, but he used our science program as, as the basis of his pr uh, presentation. Great, thank you. And the only other thing, when you said um, their work that at the end of the technology, the, their work in creating a search engine, I, I didn't know what that meant. Oh, that's because we haven't. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we were talking about that, um, or we were going to go into that as far as our goals for next year, but. Oh, wait, to... then we'll wait. Okay. That's fine. That's great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other? Mr. Higgins. The. Um... The half hour um, computer time, I, I understand 15 minutes being way too short. Um, it, the half an hour, is that enough time or, or do you see you pushing that limits because of the short attention span? Yes, actually, as well? <laughs> yes, um, yes to both. Um, all of our specialists at the kindergarten level are a half hour long just because of their developmental age and, and right. the way that they can sustain their attention for that long. So, um, so the, the half hour seems to be appropriate at this mm -hmm. time. Oh, Mrs. Benton. I just want to uh, reinforce the, the and, and give thanks to our parent volunteer at the uh, that started at the Wildwood, who has really put together a <laughs> kindergarten curriculum that is. I told him he should publish it, and it's all free and it's all sequential in in that it covers all the different subject areas and his willingness to go to the uh, Beltwell and train parents this year and work in their lab um, once a year is really. Um, goes to the core of what has always been special in Wilmington that it has impressed me is the consistency on both sides of towns that all kindergarten students are getting the same uh, mm -hmm. exposed to the same um, experiences and and, that, and and it's just an amazing um, really wonderful opportunity for all That's our great. students so I, I, I'm thinking that maybe I should invite them some night to do a little presentation oh, with you. Okay. okay that would be nice yeah. excellent thank you you got a question? Quick question. We'll go, oh, sorry, Mr. Marchese. No, I'm sorry. The software the kindergarten kids are using online in the schools, is that accessible for them at home so the parents can play with them at home and, and use this stuff at home on their own computers, or is it just the school no, based? They're, they're websites. So okay. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So the kids know what website, or at least send the information home to the parents so they can. Yes, absolutely. Excellent. That's no, good. I think I saw you said it's on the website too. Yep. Is it on the, web? yes. it's on the website? Yes. It could do. It's yeah. great. Hey, thank you. Thanks. Moving on to the Australian Movement Street. Good evening. 
good either. We, uh, the way we've done our summary sheets is the on goal number one, we did combine the summary um, because it worked out pretty consistent for both of us. Um, but then we did separate summary sheets on goals two and three. So each one of us will take a turn addressing them, but we're going to add anything that's different maybe with goals two and three. So on goal number one, um, we are hoping to use that results to inform instruction to augment the implementation of the reading program. Unfortunately, we were unable to achieve this goal last year due to funding source because, again, with fiscal restraints last year, it was going to require us to be able to purchase uh, standardized testing. And we're hoping to be able to administer this to both grade one and two. Um, it was our hope to start collecting more uh, local data and to get some more um, student um, baseline data through doing our own um, standardized testing. It's clear to us, though, that the district supports this and recognizes it's important as well, too. And therefore, you're going to see in our presentation that we want to continue with this goal for this year. And we have streamlined it working first with grade two. And if funds continue, we will then expand it to grade one. So while we are unable to achieve it and we understand why, we don't want to let go of it and we want to continue. And that will be a goal that we'll be addressing uh, in next year's school improvement plan. All right, uh, good evening, everybody. For goal two, our specific objective was to enhance communication through the use of technology. Um, we continue to rely on websites, web pages, the district page, the school page, teacher, individual teacher pages as a main source of communication between home and school and, and with the community as well. And to that end, we had many in-service workshops last year to help teachers uh, develop their own web pages. Um, and so teachers have been working. We've had the number of teachers that have their own web page and keep that updated. That's increased every year, and it continues to do so. Uh, we also had teacher user groups, technology user groups, where teachers would meet informally and just discuss um, different ways they were using technology in the classroom, different things they had tried, different websites, uh, use of the smart board, uh, different things with PowerPoint, different things they were trying, and, and just sharing ideas, uh, bouncing ideas off each other. And that worked well last year as well. Last year, our telephone service, the ConnectEd service that we were using last year also, we continued to use that. And that, that again, we're trying to send less and less paper notices home, uh, trying to, to get parents uh, into the habit of looking to the website for information, and also um, using the ConnectEd system, uh, or, and now the Alert Now system, uh, to notify parents of you know, picture day and open house and conferences and early dismissals and those kinds of things, rather than generating more paper going home. Uh, and that's worked very well. Uh, parents are in the habit of taking those calls, and, and the system's worked real well. The only thing I would add to Mr. Sands' remarks is that we'd be remiss if we didn't leave out that the success of particularly with our web page is due to our webmaster, mm -hmm. who's done an incredible job. We get the information to him, and it is incredible how quickly he's able to post that information. So it, it, uh, having the one district webmaster, in my opinion, I think in others, is that has worked out really well. Um, and his response time is just incredible. So he really does deserve recognition for that. And that's a middle school uh, art teacher, Neil Roberts. I, I concur. He's done a phenomenal job. We are getting all kinds of positive feedback from all at every level on um, the timeliness of information and the easy accessibility to information. Okay. Sorry, Mr. Marchese. Um, I apologize. I just just want to jump back to goal number one. Um, I'm sorry, since you're tag team, I figured, yeah, I could do this to you. Um, in terms of the funding that you're looking looking for, standardized testing, what are the costs that we're talking about? Is it five thousand? Is it thousand bucks? Is it ten thousand? What what is the the number? I know that our um, literacy coordinator, Mr. Lapointe. We first, because one of the first things we had to do, Mr. Marchese, was take a look at what particular tool we wanted to use first. And then we had to then determine the grade levels we were going to minister to. Yeah. So I don't, I, I know he was investigating and had some prices. I'm not, do you know, Mrs. Benton, if uh, 10000 or, or mm -hmm. 9000 Okay. But we have the funds to purchase it this year. Oh, so we are going to go forward with it this year. Oh, excellent. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's it's, okay. Our, it's our first goal. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there you go. You're, you're not going to come back next year to tell you're you we didn't achieve. You're, you're going to achieve your first goal this year. <laughs> you're welcome. Let's suspend it. Speaking uh, from um, with my elementary curriculum um, hat on, we you know we have now um, trained um, the kindergarten teachers in, in using dibbles. We we wanted a um, a standardized test that we could use other than MCAS to um, 
give teachers better information on where students stood as far as in their um, reading uh, ability. Um, and that's what this is all about, is, is, is a standardized test that we can um, administer to all the second graders and use that information before they are exposed to MCAS in third grade and give them a, a, a leg up. So yeah, we'll give the current teachers information, performance on their students. It'll be additional information. But what's even good about it will be giving the receiving teachers, because as it stands now, we administer the MCAS to the third grade students. By the time we get the information, they now have moved on to fourth grade students. So we really don't have information on current students right now. So this will give us the ability, and that's why we also want to expand it to the first grade, of having information, and it's, it's local inf baseline data, on students who are currently in our building and use it in comparison as they get in preparation for the MCAS. So I think it's key to, uh, to go in that direction. Is it the same class in both grades that you expand it to the first grade to be nine grand, 9,000 as well? Correct. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, Mr. Veal. Uh, well, just to back on the same subject on this, on the standardized testing though, is this tool that you're looking at, maybe we'll get more information on it, is it, is it correlated to um, what other school districts are doing or, or some national, are there databases that it's comparing to, national and international? I mean, some of them we've looked at, you know, has been the Stanford, have been looked at IRAs and different things that the other school systems have used. In fact, I believe this school system used to use it in the past too, or before I came here. So yes, I think that's part of it is that we're looking to see what other school systems are using and it, it would be based on uh, national, national standards standard. and, and give us, you know, again, be in the standards of our information. So well, now at this, I guess now I have to ask a question. <laughs> at this point, we do not, how many tests or standardized tests are we given to the kindergartners? Right Stan now? We don't really, uh, we're not administering any standardized test at this point. Okay, so dibbles and, but they're being tested in something. Well, we're doing dibbles. We're different types of assessments and, and then that's not so be standardized, but okay. there are different research. So it's that's like we took thing. the Gates, we probably all had the Gates McGinty when we were growing up. And our reading department does that when they're determining students who may be at risk of, who uh, could qualify for reading support services. Okay. <coughs> but for the rest of them up through till we get to MCAS, first, second, third grade, we're not giving standardized tests? Not to all of them, right? No. no. Okay. We're bringing right. that back. We're going to bring it to back. Up. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right, our third goal had to do to continue to provide a safe and secure environment uh, for learning. And of course, as you know, all these goals tie in with our strategic plan. And basically, um, Dr. McGinn and I came before you um, to talk about the evacuation practice drill that we were going to be working on. And this became a big focus of that particular goal. Um, I'm happy to report at you know, both sites we had uh, successful evacuation drills. We did a lot of learning from it. We did a lot of debriefing from it. I was fortunate enough to have the rainy day while Mr. Sanderson had the sunny day. <laughs> but that aside, um, everything seemed to work out. But it was a, a truly a learning, a true learning experience. But I think, as always, when you conduct something, what you do is good, but what you learn from it afterwards and talk about is so valuable. And that's when we had the final meeting of the evacuation task force in June, and all the principals came um, and we talked about it. We got everything ready so that our colleagues who may be doing it this year mm -hmm. have everything ready to go for them. Mm -hmm. So, but it was really uh, truly successful. Um, but unfortunately, as we told you last year, even as we get some of the layers achieved, more layers are appearing and we know we have much more work to continue to do. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I wouldn't have much to add that the, um, the evacuation committee did a great job uh, meeting and just really developing a clear specific set of guidelines procedures for how we'd react if there was an evacuation and so when it came time to do the actual drill and, and the buses were going to show up and we were going to you know really run a full rehearsal um the the procedures the everybody knew what they were supposed to do their roles you know everything went pretty well so for a, for a dry run for a first practice i think i think at both schools it went really well yeah and I know because he's so humble, but he would admit as assistant principal last year, Mr. Sanderson uh, was critical in uh, creating a lot of the forms, um, the schematics that we used that we, you know, that uh, then Lisa King added to. And so both assistant principals were, were played key roles in helping us get those forms established in the keys because everyone knew their role, knew where they were standing, knew where the buses were going, and, and, and it was, uh, we thanked them for doing that work. Thank you. Dr. McGinn. I just think that the other thing to be added to are just the relationships that were um, 
crea created, but but also uh, strengthened between the various public safety uh, outfits in the town of Wilmington, working with school people on the evacuation and the safety planning. It was really a, an enjoyable experience, and, and certainly I think will pay dividends uh, in other instances when we're uh, in need of interfacing with public safety officials. Thank you. Do we have any comments or questions on these the three bills? Um, I, when I was going through these, um, I realized that I think I have a, um, I might have for school improvement, a philosophical difference in some of the some of the school improvement goals. Um, and I want you to know that I love the ones coming up for this year. But these, for some of them, I see some of them as administrative goals. Um, and when I was reading through all the packets, um, and please do not take this as criticism, I'm just saying I have a different, I have a different point of view on some of these, um, that we were talking about the, t in Wilmington we say that the teacher-student goal, that that's our core, our teacher-student relationship. And um, under professional development, the, t the system has decided that the critical areas are implementation of new curriculum, differentiated instructional strategies, use of student performance data, and technology education. So when I was looking through the school improvement goals, that's what I was looking for. And for instance, in your third goal, this is the part I loved. Um, that the group of teachers, you're talking about maintaining lines of communication within the school community, and I think of that as more something we should be doing anyway, but when you have, this is where it becomes the goal to me. The group of teachers participate in a technology user group where they discuss the ways to integrate the technology into their classrooms along with applying what they had learned into the classrooms, because now you've come to the teacher-student relationship. And so um, I, I know that these are um, these were a lot of work, and I really do appreciate them. And um, I'm not saying this to be critical. I'm saying that you know what something happened between these and this coming year because I think you agreed with me this coming year, and I see the ones for this coming year as every one of them has that relationship with the teacher student in them. And so I'm just I just make that comment for whatever reason, except for the fact that um, I, I'm seeing as we're going along that everything we're doing is becoming more and more connected. And it's becoming one thing, we're going from our strategic plan to our staff development, they're all connecting. And the only time I see a disconnect is when we don't have the student, and I, and I know we could argue this, that this was about the students, the evacuation plan, but for me, I think I wouldn't have used that as a school goal. Um, I would have done a, a, a different one, but it's, it's good that it's there, but I'm saying in a couple of the different levels, some of them um, were goals that to me, they didn't have that teacher connectedness to the students, so to me that was just a total difference in philosophy for me. But um, I thank you. This I think the um, so much work. It's a lot of work, and you've done a great job. Okay. Um, and I think it was great that a, a couple of on a couple of areas you talked about the communication with the parents, getting the web pages up and and doing all of that, and um, that's really I think this year going to be making a difference. We'll be able to see the difference in what's offered to the parents and help them to become more of a part of the education of the kids. Okay, but thank you. Okay, the next. Mr. Ferriero, Mr. Shaw. Mr. Thank you. Um, Mr. Apple only gave us a nice segue when he was talking about MCAS. Um, when students come to the North and the West, it's really the first time we have uh, hard and fast MCAS data to work with. Uh, as he said, they take the test there, but they never really get to do much with the data. We do. Um, so you'll notice that um, most of our goals are MCAS and data related. Um, I'm going to talk about the North and he's going to talk about the West because obviously our results might be are slightly different. Uh, so we'll kind of bounce back and yeah. forth on this. The goals are the same. Yeah. The goals are the same, but obviously the results are slightly different. Um, when we when we analyzed our MCASE data several years ago, um, 
we, we hypothesized, I guess is the best word, that uh, if we could focus our attention on improving students' performance on open response questions, that we could bring about a significant overall change, uh, a significant overall improvement in, in, in MCAS results. Uh, we set a two-year goal, really, uh, on both e ELA and math, um, similar goals, um, with the focus on open response. A lot of effort was put into open response at both schools during those two-year periods. Uh, we created open response, standardized open response questions that teachers administered on a regular basis. Um, they met on a regular basis to, to work on how they would score uh, open response questions and, and share ideas about how to then take that data and go back and improve performance. Um, as a result of that two-year plan, the results were somewhat mixed. Um, in terms of at, at the north, at the grade five level, uh, our overall improvement pretty much stayed the same in ELA. Um, in the fourth grade, we made a 5% uh, improvement. We did meet our goal uh, at, the, at the fourth grade level. Um, in terms of actual open response improvement, I, I guess we're sort of to the point where we're not sure that was the best way to, to focus our attention. There was some improvement, though slight. Um, so when we talk about our next year's plan, we're going to kind of shift gears a little bit. We're still going to maintain trying to make that achievement, that, that goal of moving students from proficient to, to uh, I'm, I'm sorry, from needs improvement up to proficient in advanced categories. We're going to approach it in slightly different ways. Um, I'll, I'll talk about, you know, in terms of math, um, again, it was a very small improvement was, uh, was found uh, at the fifth grade level. Um, but at the fourth grade level, again, we met the fourth, we met the four percent. So um, we seem to do a little better at the fourth grade level. Um, slight improvement with the fifth grade. We're making progress, not quite what we had projected. Um, and again, we're not 100% certain that uh, continuing in that vein uh, on making the primary focus open response is the way we want to go long term. Uh, we're not throwing it out, but we got some, some other ideas to, to continue that improvement. Mr. Shaw. Um, thank you, Ms. Ferriel. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a funny thing because I actually, uh, at the West, we actually showed some significant gains in open response scores over the course of a couple of years, but like the bang for the buck wasn't as big as we thought it would be like, you know, with the overall improvement rate of kids like, you know, hitting that advanced proficient target. Um, uh, so, so with that said, in English language arts, we did make some, you know, the, the grade five class, when you compare them against themselves, um, we actually went up to a 77%, um, you know, advanced proficient rate uh, in the student body, which is, which was a significant uh, increase. In grade four, they, they improved their scores when you compare them against themselves by about 4%, which is what the goal was over a couple of years to raise their, you know, by 4% the amount of kids in these categories. Um, and we did show some open response. Grade five was about a wash. Grade five went from getting a 59% you know, correct rate on open response questions, the next year there was 60%. So it's, it might be statistically insignificant as far as that 1% goes. Uh, grade four is a little more significant. This is, again, uh, English language arts. They went from a 47% correct rate uh, to a 54% correct rate. So that was, that was a big jump. That was a 7% jump in, in the amount of questions that they got right and the amount of material they answered correctly. But again, it doesn't always translate back to, like, you know, in the overall scores. And that's why, you know, as, as Mr. Ferriero said, we kind of tweaked our plan for this year. Uh, in math, it was a little bit different. Uh, grade five did show some improved results again um, when you compare them against themselves. Grade four actually dropped the score. You know, the grade four uh, math um, uh, went down four percentage points from a 61 percent, from a 65 percent correct rate to a 61 percent correct rate uh, that they had in the um, in the third grade. But the but the open response scores went up. Do you know what I mean? So we we will kind of we have some mixed data that we were looking at as far as this whole plan goes. Um, so so again, overall, you know, the the open response. Uh, was definitely an effort that was well undertaken because it, it at least aligned all the teachers with the way we're teaching open response questions, with the rubrics we use to correct the open response questions, with the whole writing program that we have that, that, that is part of the open response uh, process. Uh, and we're going to take that and move, and move from there um, as we go forward. And uh, lastly, the other goal that we had together that we, um, uh, was the, uh, the, the social, we always have a social goal um, at our grade level also. Um, and again, it's the same for, you know, for both schools, which is to, you know, the, to, to read it to you, know, to positively impact the social growth and development of all the students. Um, we um, actually, Mr. Ferry with the North uh, implemented a, um, a school council last year, which I'm in, uh, doing the same thing this year for grade five students. We hadn't had that in the past. We still have the peer mediation grant, another year of the peer mediation uh, program going on also. Um, and also, uh, Mr. Tracy alluded to this earlier, we do have the High School Drama Club. This, is, this will be the third year this year of the High School Drama Club actually working directly with us on developing skits 
the high school students develop skits based on input we give them on what we see as issues in our schoolyard and in, in the school and things like that. They develop skits and they actually come over to the, to, to the north one day, to the west one day, and they actually perform these skits in front of the student bodies and they break out into small groups and the, you know, and like this, the high school students go with small groups of grade four and five students and talk about these different issues, you know, that came up. So it's a lot of what you were talking about, you know, like the, the connection with the high school kids down to the elementary kids. So that goal is in place again for this year. Uh, that's something else we kind of keep tweaking that each, each, each year goes on we build on what worked and it we kind of dump what you know what what didn't work so that's that's that it's a lot of numbers in ours there's a lot of uh, number crunching in those two goals so um but, but any, any questions you you have us certainly welcome anyone have any questions i think definitely that idea of um the um the high school drama club and then the former olympic medalist mm -hmm. She, she was fabulous last year. She was great. We could probably get her again. She was a wonderful, uh, what a wonderful speaker. She had overcome a lot of obstacles uh, personally in her life to get where she was. Um, and, and it was, you can always tell how good a speaker is by how the, how the kids are, you know. This was dead silent, just locked on every word and every emotion she had. And she didn't come in with like, a, she came in as just dressed as we are now. She didn't come in like, you know, with a medal on or with her gear on because she didn't want to distract from what her message was, which was perseverance <clears throat> and overcoming obstacles of a personal nature at a young age. And that's, that's, that was the whole, um, the whole spin of her story and it was fabulous. Oh, that's She's excellent. great, yeah. Thank you. Any, thank you. Middle <laughs> school? Yes. Um, I can update you on, on last year's goals at the middle school. We had four goals last year and one of them was actually a revision uh, based on our need to revise our school improvement plan. That was goal number three. But focusing on goal number one, uh, it was very much addressing curriculum and helping to articulate our curriculum maps, um, specifically in the unified arts area. We spent an awful lot of time sort of adjusting to our new master schedule and what that meant for the courses that were offered previously for different rotations and now for semester long or year long courses. So adjusting those curriculum maps and then continuing with different adoptions, for example, in the science and the world language departments. Um, so those will be fluid documents as we go forward even this year with the teachers trying to adjust and figuring out what they're able to cover month by month, concept by concept, so that we will, re, um, we will look at those again at the end of this year as well. Um, goal two and three focus very much, and you can see from the charts on, uh, on numbers, as Mr. Shaw said, uh, on our MCAS performance. And um, you can see in, in the summary, um, we, we would meet our goal, let's say, for example, in mathematics by increasing our combination in advanced and proficient by 2% in two grade levels, but we wouldn't meet it in the third grade level. So we weren't across the board in six, seven, and eight, um, but we showed great sparks. And, and for example, I can tell you that uh, we had seven perfect scores in the, I'm sorry, 12 perfect scores in the seventh grade at the advanced level. So there are sparks and there are great improvements in certain grades, and then we don't see it consistently across the board. So we will be focusing on that, and you will see that in the upcoming plan for 09-10. Uh, based on our scores, specifically with our subgroups, I know that Mrs. Benton has shared with all of you already, um, and similar to many middle schools across the state, uh, we find ourselves, um, for our accountability status, in corrective action. And so you will see in our new improvement plan what steps we are taking to address that as directed by the state. And that was specifically in mathematics for our subgroup of special education. Um, in English, again, if you look at some of the charts over the past three to four years, you can see that in the advanced and the proficient, the Eng English language arts are strong in the overall scores for the students and as a school. But if you take a look at our subgroups again, um, we continue to struggle in the area with special education students, and we are on improvement year two. So we have some curriculum work um, going on in English language, art, English language arts with some training for the teachers in a specific writing program to help address that. Um, our last goal is our um, school climate goal, and we did an awful lot of work uh, with regard to our training of teachers. All of our staff have been trained by our nine teacher trainers in our second step violence prevention um, curriculum. And that allowed us to sort of put an overall calendar together over this past summer and we are integrating that curriculum throughout the school year. Different lessons are going on at different grade levels, sometimes as standalone and sometimes integrated into an English language arts lesson or a social studies lesson or 
a phys ed lesson. And so we've taken great steps to really bring that throughout the whole school um, as a community effort. And uh, we continue with our team building activities. We had a very successful initiative um, last year as well as this year with bringing the whole school community together to help foster respect, cooperation, responsibility, um, citizenship, and uh, our last core value of confidence. And those, are, those goals are also very important to us. Do we have any, any comments or questions? Um, oh, you know what, I had a question. When you're talking about increasing the number of students by 2%, we're, only ta we're not talking about a huge amount of students, right? But we're really talking about a handful of students to move from one category to the other, to the or other. in the case of the warning students, to decrease that by another two to three students, mm -hmm. so that we're really down there at the at the one percent and zero percent as we move to two, 2014. Then, are you able to translate from um, if you you have this certain group of students in sixth grade who who don't do as well, and then in seventh grade, are you able to translate and see if there are new students who join the group? or if there are the same students are not doing well or are some of them really doing well and somebody else has come in? Uh, it it, it varies, sure. Uh, Historically, yeah. the same students that are in our warning categories typically have been in our warning category from the fourth, the fifth, to the sixth, to the seventh. So we see those students um, struggling all the way up. Um, but there are some kids that do cross over and we, we had some happy parents and some happy students that were very thrilled to receive their scores in the past two weeks uh, and they moved into the proficient range. And it could be a matter of two points, it could be a matter of ten points that they raised into that next category. Now with the, with the added 20 points on um, the test scores, are you finding that more students are having trouble? It, it seems that the, we are not, this hasn't affected us. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure about your question about the 20 points. Um, they changed it from 220 to 240 right. that you had to have it. That, with that extra 20 points, is that causing less students to make it or is it has I think that you find here? it and you can take a look. You find that the majority of our students are really in the needs improvement category where we need to move them over uh, into proficient. That's where the heavy load is and we need to focus on that this year and we have some ideas that we've come up with from after school MCAS tutoring to some professional development for the teachers in oh, math. Excellent. Yeah, I think that's what I was trying to get to. Great, thank you. It, it, Mrs. Benton. In, in addition, in fact, I just sent you all the invitations today. Um, Dr. McGinn and uh, Christine, and they want a union rep. Uh, I thought uh, Teresa, a teacher at the middle school and school committee chair, to attend a, a meeting at UMass Lowell. The DESC is put together district groups to um, bring schools together who are on corrective action um, plans. So I think we're going to see Stoneham, Wakefield, all our crowning oh. communities, all. Uh, Working really? in, so it's, it's instead of reinventing the wheel that we can work together um, and share yeah, together. Um, so what we're doing that's working and learn mm -hmm. take some ideas. So we'll keep you posted. That on That makes good sense. Yes, Dr. McGinn, were you? I was just going to say that I think your reference to the increase of the 20 points mm -hmm. is applicable to the competency determination in the instead of in, in terms of graduation the 10th grade right. scores those youngsters now instead of having to achieve the the 220 need the right. 240. 240. Yep. Yeah. Mr. Tracy. Thank you. Uh, the high school had two goals from 08 09. Um, mostly because of the size of one of them, which I will get to in a minute, but uh, the initial goal was to initiate and integrate curriculum map or an online software that people could access at any time from any place. Uh, initially, uh, as part of the five-year plan in year two, we started to integrate uh, curriculum maps and, and rebuild curriculum maps for each of our courses. That was done on a Word document that we had to kind of email around and keep up with who had the the most up-to-date version and, and make sure we had everybody with this most up-to-date version. Uh, so we were able to move to the curriculum mapper software which is an online uh, dynamic mapping software that allows us to um, have a standardized set of maps and break them out for each teacher teaching a particular course. Bless you. They're able to teach a, uh, take their own course and just use an example English 9A. If you're teaching that you can take that map and modify it uh, for, your, for your needs. Um, based on, on what the department is doing in, in English 9 that year. You can also integrate the curriculum frameworks 
by adding them into the map, you actually embed them into the map. You can embed uh, assessments into the map. You can embed, embed rubrics in any other Word, uh, Excel, or PDF type of a document right inside the curriculum map so does it, it's there. Uh, you can share it and you, you, you're able to um, access more information, actually worldwide information through the curriculum mapper software by searching. We're a member of what they call global search and for instance if we're looking for something on Shakespeare, we can search Shakespeare and get all the maps interna internationally that have the word Shakespeare in it and teachers can look at it to get ideas and see what other um, communities are, are doing both locally, uh, nationally and internationally. So the software implementation really kicked off in May of 08 but uh, took place during, the initial training took place during the all-day CIT on uh, November 1. It was a great opportunity for a company rep to come and work with some of our um, initiators, as you will. They, they were able to do an all-day training and take that information and begin to build the maps and get them ready for each of the departments. Uh, throughout the year, they, the CTLs and some other um, tech-savvy people that we had uh, helped us to train some other teachers and continue to do that uh, work within departments. We, we have at least one person who is pretty proficient with the curriculum mapper software, enough to sit with a teacher and help them to uh, initially navigate and, and build their own map and, and embed the software. So those things have taken place uh, initially, as it's outlined here, the English and Foreign Language Departments were the most prolific because of the curriculum renewal cycle. They were uh, the current uh, users uh, uh, that were on, on cycle. And then we've expanded it um, to, to math about halfway through the year. And then uh, at the end of the year and beginning of this year into science and social studies, where we have 63 users now um, on the, the software that are actively building, creating, adjusting and uh, 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 maps. And what we'll do at the end of this year, is, uh, extending this, this plan a little bit, is be able to uh, run statistical analysis on each map based on um, the what they've embedded, the standards that they've embedded, and it can tell us, the program can tell us um, where the highs and lows are throughout the school year. Uh, if you're hitting a particular standard more often than another standard, you can also set your, your goals related to MCAS in connection with the software. So it's, it's really a very dynamic um, and, a, and a huge help for teachers to be able to access it anywhere, anytime. So I think it's, it's been uh, very successful and we, can, we plan to continue to use it and expand our maps and continue to, to add to those maps uh, for the next couple of years. Excellent. Oh, Mr. Mackenzie? Uh, Mr. Tracy, how many teacher, teachers are up at the high school that could potentially use this? Cause I know you said you're, there's only 63 that are using it. 83. So. So is there any re reason why the resistance, why the, the remaining 20 aren't using it? Oh, well, there's no resistance. Oh, okay. It's, they it's just, just part of the it? rollout. Okay. Okay. It's, it's, uh, uh, the software is based on a uh, user. So we, ex we started at 20, we expanded to 30, 40, 50, so up to 60. So we're just kind of growing it slowly okay. rather than jamming it down everybody's okay. throat. And the teachers are accepting it? Oh, absolutely. It, oh, okay. Yeah, they've okay. been great with it. Okay. It's a very uh, intuitive software. It's very easy to manipulate, very easy to get into. Once you're in, it works uh, somewhat like a, a combination of a Word and Excel document where you, you have the same features uh, and the embedding is kind of the extra piece that I think people really like because they can store everything in one place. They don't have to go looking on their computer or their thumb drive or this CD for each of the things that they'll need for upcoming lessons. Yeah. Okay, so, thank you. Excellent. Mr. Vail. Um, could you please explain in, in sort of plain English what um, a curriculum map is? Sure. Um, <laughs> For some of us who might not know. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, similar to a roadmap, it is something that we use for on a course by course basis and just use Algebra 1. We would look at the entire course across a school year and we would put together um, signs along the way and standards along the way based on um, lesson planning and course syllabus that help us <coughs> to design what happens almost monthly. The, the maps are based on a monthly basis. So each of the things that teachers will do in September are pretty standardized. So the map allows us to keep it in one place, share it out, and give new teachers especially kind of those guide points to be able to say this is the way we want you to travel. They can work in conjunction with the CTLs of each department to help them to make sure they're staying on track with the rest of the teachers in the department. So it's really um, an, uh, it's it's kind of like Google for for um, for course courses uh, course outlines. 
It's really a, a skeleton of what's going to happen throughout the course, and then the teachers will add um, the meat, if you will, throughout the school year as they, as they design their lesson plan, as they integrate with their staff, and as they build uh, assessments related to the, to the maps. Thank you, Mr. Tracy. Okay. The second piece is um, a monster of a goal, and, and I, I have to commend the entire staff. This was uh, quite an undertaking, and, and they, they have uh, rallied to the charge, and uh, we spent every possible moment working on this goal last year to begin to get the staff into and through the accreditation process. We were able to meet this goal uh, to get to approximately two-thirds of the way through the process and uh, feel very comfortable uh, with the amount of the work that the steering committee did. Steering committee met every Tuesday last year to um, organize and direct traffic, if you will, related to the process. Uh, each of the teachers was added to a committee related to the seven standards. They were then uh, assigned to develop a report um, in a format that's designated by the accrediting agency and uh, finish a draft report by May. The draft reports were all done and in on time. Uh, they were tweaked during the summer by the steering committee co-chairs. They met to kind of put them in the same voice, uh, use the same language, and make sure that there were connections uh, in each uh, of the reports that were related uh, so that we, we try and, I guess you could say, crossing the T's and, and dogging the I's. Um, and the process is now continuing this year. The, the teachers have to vote to accept each of the reports, and, and we've, uh, we have uh, four of them done. And we have three more to do it. We do two each faculty meeting. But, but the teachers uh, really, really, really put a lot of time in. Every faculty meeting, every CIT time, and, and the steering committee, every Tuesday on their own, met for at least 90 minutes or more to just get, to keep this process going. So um, we are in great shape. We, we uh, have all of the things ready uh, for the team and, and, and look forward to meeting with our team chairperson once that person is assigned in December. Thank you. Anyone have Mr. Marchese? Yeah, Mr. Tracy, I know accreditation is always a big thing. It comes you know, once every 10 years. But w would it make sense to have this as an ongoing process instead of waiting until you know year eight and we get two more years to go for the process, to keep it ongoing once you have every, all the committees in place and teachers involved, just to keep it going so that every year you're constantly evaluating the school to, to make sure we're not slipping? Mm -hmm. So when the accreditation comes up, there's no big surprises. One of the advantages we had was um, my second year here, I put together a five-year plan that started the accreditation process for Wilmington High School. Um, I, I arrived on the year that the five-year um, kind of response was due for the previous one. Mm -hmm. So I was able to work and investigate that and get myself up to speed with Wilmington High School. Our second year, we started the five-year plan. And each of those years, if you look at our plan, we've touched upon a piece of the accreditation and been able to get the things in place um, well ahead of schedule, which I think made it easier for us to just focus on the writing. We weren't creating rubrics. We weren't creating um, academic expectations. We weren't developing our mission. All of those things were done um, each year along the way. So it was, uh, it was, it was a long-term plan that, that I, I think put us in a, a very good spot. And we'll find out once the final <laughs> report comes. But uh, I think the teacher would agree, too, that we got a lot of that stuff out of the way. And I think they learned a lot of, uh, along the way about the process, the foundational pieces of a good, solid, yeah. quality educational institution. And, and the plan going forward is to, is to keep, keep that going? It's a requirement. Yeah. They'll do um, a two-year progress report, they'll do a five-year progress report, and then they can ask for a progress report at any time through our process until the next um, 10-year evaluation comes up. Yeah, but, but in terms of your own plan with, with the teachers and, and at the high school, you're just going to keep going with what you're doing and, and, and maintaining. Well, we're, we're in the process now working with the CTLs to expand the, the five-year plan. We're up, <coughs> basically up this year, and, and I want them to develop it now. I don't want it to, to be my plan. I want it to be the school plan so that they, they can have a piece of the things that they find important. And certainly we want it, we're trying to kind of coincide it with we know we'll get recommendations from the accrediting agency. It's, it's, you, you will definitely get uh, recommendations. We're hoping to be able to funnel the, the recommendations um, that match what we think we need so that we can come together in a year and be able to nail it down and go forward. Excellent. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? Dr. McGinn. I just add to uh, Mr. Marchese's question and, and what Mr. Tracy just pointed out. Um, I've 
I've been very impressed um, just watching the process and the way Mr. Tracy and the steering committee have uh, done exactly what he just described to you, because I think it is an overwhelming uh, process and can be overwhelming if one waits until a year and a half, two years prior to the visit. And then I think it can become all consuming. But just the sense I get, and I served on one of the subcommittees, the sense I get is that things were in place and ongoing in a very reasonable schedule so that this year um, the teacher's eyes are still on the prize, the work with the students, rather than feeling like, uh, you know, we've got these things to do prior to March 1st. So uh, I was just very impressed by the the well-planned, well-managed uh, rollout of, of, of responding to the various parts of, of the requirements of the accreditation process. So I think the school committee should feel rest assured that, that things are on an even keel and, and that teachers are not consumed by this sizable project. Mm -hmm. Good, thank you. Mrs. Benton. I think one of the reasons why, um, well, from my perspective, why things work around here is because you have a team. I have a team that's sitting in front of you and around this table. Mm -hmm. And we don't often, I don't often have them together, and I know they're about to whiz through their district-wide school improvement <laughs> plan. Dude, no questions um, from here. <laughs> but um, before they do, I, I, I just, when I think about um, the question that um, Quincy had asked earlier about curriculum mapping and what's gone on in the past six years that a lot of us, have been part of this district, um, it's because it starts at the Early Childhood Center. And, you know, when, when I, I can't stress enough how, how impressed I am and pleased I am with the consistency on both sides of town. Mm -hmm. When I talked about using that computer technology in the labs as one example, that's across the board. These principals, head teachers work together. It's not a competition, it's a collaboration. And I think that's what makes, well, I believe what makes Wilmington special. And, and, and although we don't always make the progress that we hope to make, we learn from the results. Mm -hmm. And that's what I hope you heard this evening, because it's, it's, it's not about winning the race. It's about making steps along the way that make us um, better. Um, they hear it all the time from me, going from good to great. But I mean, there it is, right there. And I just want to publicly mm -hmm. thank all of them for the work that they're they're doing. And I hope, I believe, it shows through. And I think when when the NEASC accreditation team comes in the spring, you're going to hear some some very positive things about the school system. And it it's because of it all starts in pre-K. Pre-K. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Dr. McGinn. Okay, if we can uh, move forward, and now we're going to look toward the future and, and this year, and we'll, we'll uh, before we begin with the high school, what I'd, I'd just like to say something, Mrs. Kane, that you had mentioned, and that is how things are so closely related. Things seem to be attached to one another. And, you know, on the third or fourth page of the school improvement plan, um, you know, there's the uh, attention to using data to improve student achievement. Mm -hmm. As you know, a big goal in the uh, strategic plan. Uh, and, you know, from that, Mrs. Benton suggests to me that, that why don't you pursue a grant uh, having to do with using data. We were lucky enough to, to gain that grant. Uh, all of us here in this room underwent uh, training in terms of getting better and more adept at using data. And so hopefully what, what you'll see in these plans is that continued connection to making greater use of data as we measure our progress uh, uh, as we go forward with our goals. So uh, it's back to you, uh, Mr. Tracy. Uh, well, I should say beforehand, you can see that all of, the, all of the goals the superintendent asks relate to the six themes of the strategic plan. Uh, learning results, professional development, facilities, community, technology, communication, uh, and also uh, the charge to the principals uh, aligning things with the strategic plans, data-driven uh, and measurable statements for each improvement item, uh, and the uh, progress to be documented and measurable goals, all uh, coming from the superintendent to the authors of the school improvement plans. And we'll go to uh, Mr. Tracy and his um, school council. Great, thank you. Um, I'd like to thank the members of our, our school council. It was uh, always a task trying to get everybody together on the same time, but we were able to, to pull it off. We had some uh, great participation and some 
um, excellent input that, that kind of helped us to drive some of the things that we're doing. The first goal at the high school um, is to begin the integration of the career path model. This was started in really 06, 07, 07, and 08 and kind of went to sleep last year because of the accreditation process. We just could not fit it in. So we wanted to bring this back and um, this you will see uh, start your first, your first uh, I guess, look at it will be in the, with the program of studies. We're going to try and integrate uh, the first step, if you will, of some of these career paths. For instance, um, the medical fields. What are some of the courses students would take along the way um, that are, that who, who may be interested in the medical fields? Um, there's still a lot of work to do th with this, and it, it, it's going to be adjusting uh, over time based on changes that we see both below us at the six through eight level and above us. Um, at the collegiate and advanced study level, but um, this is, is certainly one of those things that we've had on the drawing board, and it will help, I think it will help our students and, and their parents answer that question, what do I want to do when I get out of high school? Uh, that seems to be, more and more seems to be a bigger question to answer for kids, and I think because traditional jobs aren't there anymore, those long-term jobs are going to jump out and be an engineer for 30 years, um, the, the job are changing almost yearly. Names of jobs, types of jobs, and, and, and some of the uh, implementation and interaction of jobs in, in, in between um, companies. So we want to try and help kids to um, identify a path, certainly not lock them onto a path, but uh, help them to find their way a little bit easier through, through their four-year uh, high school plan. Second is to initiate team talk class in math and science. Uh, this was a um, kind of a, an idea that popped up related to uh, analysis of MCAS data. We found that many of our students in the uh, self-contained classes were having a difficult time uh, passing, well not passing, I should say, but leaving that needs improvement category, the 220 to the 238 or 39 range. They, they, um, they were, seemed to be stuck there, um, kids that have taken the, the, the test several times. Uh, what we, we've decided to do is is a two-period class, and I use math as an example. I have a traditional regular education math teacher teamed up with a special education math teacher. Uh, they work together during one period teaching uh, just like a, a regular ed algebra class. Uh, it's a little bit modified, but they teach it specifically from the point of view of a regular ed student. The second period that they meet, they'll, they'll um, meet with just a special ed teacher who will make all the modifications and accommodations necessary to help those kids understand the skills that were taught in that uh, conceptual class earlier in the day. Uh, so this is going to be new for us. We, we want to try it out and, and talk with the teachers and, and try and measure what's going on. Uh, we have professional development. We have a couple of teachers going out to um, a professional development related to the integration of special ed regular ed teachers <coughs> and um, we think it will be successful to help those kids get over the bar. And then the final thing is to complete the accreditation process. Still a lot of work to do to get us to that May 14th through 17th, excuse me, March 14th through 17th visit, uh, in which it will be uh, four days of 24-7 to try and get um, all the information and the team in and, and, and um, get all the, the, the things that we need done for the process. And, and uh, after that, we St. Patrick's Day can celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Does anyone have any questions? Dr. Quick. Mr. Tracy, the, um, t the, that was an interesting concept you brought up about the team taught classes in math and science. Um, is this, where did you, exactly did you get this idea from and has it worked in other, are you getting this idea because it's worked in other school systems? Oh, I stole it. You yeah. stole it. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> no, the, the, um, one, of the, one of the beauties of, of this area, uh, the, the, the principals in this entire area communicate by email constantly. Who has this? Who does that? Who do so we're, and we, we meet um, sometimes monthly, sometimes every other month, but we're able to kind of throw those things on the table. What do you do if? Oh, wow. And we all started talking about that. And so, There were different models out there. Some people do it for one period. Um, the tech schools will do it for three periods. They just spread it out a little further through the school year. But I, I think we're all having to wrestle with that and trying uh, some different things that have worked in other schools and, and trying a model that we think will help our kids to not only learn the basic uh, foundational steps, but also to support those foundational steps with that repetition that they need. <clears throat> Thank you. Just a quick comment. Uh, Ms. Tracy, correct me if I'm wrong, but just looking at your team, 
It's made up of uh, the principal, two students, a business rep, two teachers, and, and uh, six parents. So 50% of your committee is parents. I, I think that's phenomenal. I think that, that, that's great. So, thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Tracy. Okay, Dr. McGinn. Ms. McMenamin and the middle school. Um, obviously, um, our school council obviously worked uh, very hard too. In, in the situation that we're in, we've brainstormed yeah. trying to come up with um, different ideas on how we can approach uh, specifically our learning results goal. Um, but we have three goals this year, um, and, uh, but I would like to thank my, my council. Uh, the first one, we just talked a little bit earlier about the consistency um, with regard to our curriculum uh, across the board, um, sixth grade English, uh, seventh grade social studies, making sure that there are similar experiences in each classroom for each child, no matter which house that they are assigned to, from level of homework to field trips to um, experiences um, outside of the classroom, for example, presentations and assemblies, making sure that there's consistency there, um, and also the way that we approach uh, the mapping of the curriculum. Um, so that will be uh, an important goal for us to take a look at this year. Um, the second uh, goals really fall under goal two, two for us, and that is for our learning results, specifically to MCAS and the numbers. Um, we certainly want to continue moving the number of our students into the advanced and the proficient categories, but please notice that we are not only focusing on math and English language arts, but also science and technology, that we all need to understand uh, that the children that are in the middle school now will have to pass in order to graduate, either in the ninth grade or the tenth grade, the science and technology exam. So um, they, we need to make sure we're doing that work now that we're trying to identify those students who will need uh, additional assistance. Um, and specifically with our area of um, accountability, uh, to have not only the aggregate, but all student subgroups meet their improvement target. Um, we will very likely meet our attendance target. We will very likely meet our participation target. But if we can make our improvement target, we will demonstrate adequate yearly progress. And, and that is, of course, our goal for both subjects um, and for all of our subgroups. Uh, we have some interesting ideas on, on how we're going to do that. Um, we have some professional development coming in that some of you may have seen on our activities sheet for our corrective action. We have a visiting day coming up this week to another district who also uses impact math and uses it with some of their lower level learners. Um, we also are looking perhaps next year to implement that co-teaching model where we have a math licensed teacher and a special education teacher to support the child, the children in that same classroom. And so budget-wise, as, as we proceed this fall, uh, you may see that coming from the middle school to prepare for that co-teaching model and sort of um, follow the model that the high school um, is beginning. Um, finally, on that last goal of our school climate and continuing our uh, violence prevention prevention strategies. Um, we will continue to offer professional uh, development workshops to continue the support uh, for the teachers in that curriculum um, and continue to provide those um, community-wide, school-wide activities that bring the school together as one population, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Um, and we will increase our peer mediation We've increased it last year, and we will continue to do it this year because we've found that we've had success with some of the older students role modeling for the younger children. Excellent. Thank you. Do we have any comments? Yes. I would just like to add to that that I think the, the committee would be very uh, happy with the kind of meetings that are occurring at the middle school chaired by the principal as they try to figure out what strategies, what models that they can use in order to uh, better support those groups of students who have historically not achieved. And uh, there's really a lot of creative thinking going on there and, and suggestions about how we can do things differently to address those youngsters' learning. Thank you. Mr. Ferrier? Yes. Um, the North and West uh, is a collaborative team. Uh, you, you'll notice the, the names up there. It's, it's half the people are from the West and half from the North. Uh, we work very closely in the development of our plan. We've been doing so for, for several years now. Um, and it's, it's been very effective in terms of, of uh, uh, initiating the same kinds of programs on either side of town. So uh, it's worked out very, very well. Um, the, first, the first goal 
uh, talks about uh, mathematics, both grade four and five. Again, we're, we're still trying to move our children forward. Um, one of the big assets that we have now is, uh, Dr. McGinn mentioned earlier, our, our, the Data Warehouse Project last year uh, has opened up an, a whole new resource for us uh, in terms of mining this significant data that, that we've accumulated over the last few years. Uh, the, the data teams have, have been really important in terms of what, what, we, what we're talking about in, in terms of goals this year. Um, it, it, um, we've had for several years the grade level teams doing a thorough analysis of the MCAS. This year we have the asset of having our data teams digging a lot deeper than we've done in the past. Um, they've already done a lot of data uh, analysis and now that team of people is going to take that data back to our staff and hopefully that's going to open up some new discussions that we weren't able to have before um, and, and hopefully that will, will impact instruction. Um, uh, we're going to have another Math Immersion Day this year. Again, uh, the data team has, is, has already begun looking at what are the areas of weakness specifically in mathematics that we need to, we need to address. What the Math Immersion Day will allow us to do is to take those couple of areas, uh, whether it's in uh, geometry or whether it's in uh, measurement or whatever the, the, the category of math is where the ch children seem to be struggling, and we develop an entire day focused on those particular areas fun, hands-on activity, but we immerse the kids in those particular areas that were demonstrated as weakness. Uh, the next, the next uh, activity is to implement a before-school, uh, before after-school math support program targeting students in need of assistance with test-taking strategies. This is something we initiated last year on a small scale, um, the focus being those, those specific skills needed to attack math problems. Uh, on the MCAS exam. It was more focused on this actual test taking s strategies rather than purely focusing on mathematics. Um, we want to continue that this year, expand on it, um, both for our, our low achieving students, but also we've talked about looking at those kids that are on the bubble in that needs improvement category. Uh, we did a quick analysis and, and we came up with, both of us, roughly 20 kids that are one, one question away from getting into that next category. Um, so we wanted do a separate program that really focuses on that particular group to see if we can't bump them up that one point um, in terms of meeting that, that uh, goal of 4%, of like we mentioned before. We figured that that might be a, a better focus. We, want it, we don't want to neglect those children on the low end. We want to continue to provide for them, but also provide for that next category of kids that are just missing. Uh, we implemented the Math Word of the Week program this year um, at, at the intermediate level. Uh, that, that program, uh, our math coordinator, Terry Buscemi, has, has looked at uh, vocabulary, math related vocabulary um, that children seem to, to um, struggle with when it comes to MCAS. Um, as we've looked at and an analyzed some of the questions, we've identified vocabulary that if we could make sure the children have a good grasp on those terms, that that will help them better answer those questions. So each week we introduce uh, a mathematic word of the week and we, you know, I go on the intercom and Mr. Shah does the same thing and we, we talk about that word each day, Monday through Friday, and on Friday they're given a brief quiz. and. Um, they, they drop their quiz answer in a little box in my office and I, I pull somebody to win a, a coupon to the gift store uh, at the end of the week and so we, we made it a fun thing but we're, we're uh, emphasizing those, those words that they've struggled on. Um, and lastly, we're going to implement the new uh, grade level curriculum maps that the vertical math team has, has, has assembled over the past few years. Uh, Mrs. Buscemi has done a great deal of work with the math team uh, to get those things in place um, so that we now have, a, 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 the teachers have a solid grasp on what are the critical parts of the Trailblazer math program, um, uh, where should they put their focus. Um, and she's also developed in such a way that, that I'm excited about where she's got it down to what are the critical pieces uh, which will allow teachers um, with some of the uh, special needs children, some of the inclusion classes, to spend some extra time in certain areas because she's built some time in for that. And it also will allow some, some of the children that, that are on the advanced end uh, to be given some challenge work during that time. They're not locked into that five-day cycle so much. She's done a wonderful job, um, and we're really excited that that's going to have an impact uh, on, down the road also. Mr. Shaw. Thank you, Mr. Terrio. Uh, you know, continuing on, you know, the same thing in uh, English language arts, we just, we, 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 no matter what we do, we're always trying to get more and more students into that, that proficient advanced category. Uh, you know, the activities might change, but the goal remains <coughs> the same uh, in that sense. Continue, uh, continuing on with the open response work we did last year, what we actually now have is an, is an open response question and rubric for every specific passage in the anthology and the reading program is it's lined up directly <coughs> with it. So this is something that we're using on a regular basis uh, for the open response questions. Um, one thing teachers ask for, uh, which, which, which is, is, a, is a great idea, 
Last year, we had like, you know, fifth grade teachers talking to fifth grade teachers about open response questions and looking at the work. This year, it's like, you know, well, fourth grade teachers want to work with the fifth grade teachers and see what do you expect in the fifth grade? What are you getting in fourth grade? And they want to start working together across that grade to see if they can kind of smooth the road from grade four to grade five with the expectations uh, and the rubrics that they're using to measure the writing. Uh, that the students are, are doing. Um, we've also begun um, uh, through uh, Jerry LaPointe, the um, English language arts coordinator in, uh, in, in our grades. He's uh, piloting the Houghton Mifflin uh, level reading passages assessment uh, in, in uh, two different classrooms in each school, like a grade four class and a grade five class. I guess the best analogy is something like, like a Dibbles would be like, you know, for the lower grades. This is like a measuring tool we can use in, uh, in grades four and five to assess students' reading ability at specific levels to help them get on levels where they should be uh, and then to, to, to increase their instruction from that point going forward. Um, and we've also both talked about different ways to, um, we have we have a small team in each building working on ways to, ex to expand the reading that students do outside the curriculum. You know, so we just, we just, we just got like a fact finding kind of different idea of, um, a mission that we're on as far as that goes. Uh, and then for the last goal, again, you know, to positively affect the social uh, growth and development, we, as I mentioned earlier, we still use the, um, uh, the high school drama club. We're working again with the drama club to develop skits for the kids. We do have the mediation program in place again. Uh, we, we both uh, will probably within the next two weeks have this, this, the school council elections in the buildings and have that up and running also to increase uh, student participation uh, in the operation of the schools, you know, to the extent that, that uh, it's possible. Um, and, and that's about it. I step out just for a quick minute. I apologize, but I did catch, you know, the goals here. I just have a quick question. Mm -hmm. um, there's so much in all of these and so much work. And then you think about the time in, on learning and how much time you spend with students. And it's really a day of minutes and, you know, restroom and eating and all of that. Can you just talk a little bit about the forum and the avenues to actually do this planning and collaboration and how does a fourth and a fifth grade teacher have the time amongst so many other things sure, it's, it's, it's a great to, question. to effectively do this? What we actually do is like, you know, we'll both, you know, staff meetings, you know, it's, it's a once, it's a month, once a month time that we're together. Um, and we both try to get away from like, you know, we call it the old the laundry list of things you can send in an email that you can <coughs> just read to people or send to people. So staff meeting times have become much more productive as far as, okay, here's a task we have. We want to get together and we want to examine the, the work that you guys have on you know on the on the, the 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 midterm test or on the open response questions, we do it occasionally at CIT times also. Like you know because I mean there's there's no better way to expand the, the the curriculum than to examine how the kids are responding to what we're teaching and then make changes from there. So it doesn't it doesn't we're not pulling teachers out of class time and instructional time to do this. This is happening after school, happening before school, you know at meetings and things like that. Does that? Yeah, it does. Yeah. I mean, I'm aware of, you know, I definitely know how it's happening in that regard, sure. but I think, you know, if you're listening at home, you're saying, geez, how do they manage to do all sure, of this? Sure. And it, it just, it goes to the fact that, I mean, and that's not even discussing going home and preparing for the next day yeah. or, you know, correcting papers. It's a great point. So. This, this is above and beyond, yeah. yeah. And, and I want to just add that, 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 that having the data team uh, is, it allows us to, to, to sort of hone hone in a little bit. They're doing the, the greater work in terms of, of analyzing the data and they're bringing, so when they bring it forward, the, a lot of the work's been done in terms of what is the data saying. So the discussion is more focused on what do we do with it and less on what do we have. Um, and, and those people, um, you know, have, have volunteered to do this for the entire year. So they're, they're a resource that I have, which doesn't distract from what the teachers are doing. Excellent. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Yes. Okay. Well, I just want to again. I know I say this every year, but it continues to be true. How fortunate we are at this, at this Rushing School to be having um, folks that want to be so involved in, in helping out and in, in taking a look at what's happening at the school and planning for improvement. So year after year, um, I have not had any difficulty getting parent representatives or teacher representatives, and they work very hard, and their uh, input is very invaluable to the development of this plan. Um, to that end, our first goal, and as you heard me say before, is a repeat from last year. And basically, um, again, in an effort to try to, uh, to uh, get more student um, baseline data and to um, administer a standardized testing at the second grade level, we are going to be working very closely with Mr. LaPointe, our literacy coordinator, as well as the reading specialist at both sides of town in choosing a standardized testing instrument. 
once we have that instrument chosen, then we'll be making plans to administer that test in the spring of this school year. What that's going to allow us to be able to do then is to possess, provide teachers with testing results of their current students and help them to, again, give them more information um, about their students' current performance level <coughs> towards the end of the school year and to be, be able to then share these testing results with receiving teachers in grade three, which would be a huge advantage to give them some initial baseline data and that will help them to better inform instruction so that, again, they know how to design their lessons according to the makeup of their classrooms. So we really think it is a key um, uh, goal, and uh, we really look forward to being able to have that ability this year. In an, in an effort not just to repeat one goal, we wanted to expand a little bit more. So if you notice, we would, it, it, though it's a second goal, it's actually 1A and 1B. We also, in order to develop a more comprehensive student profile, we want to collect other data and, again, working closely with our literacy coordinator, Mr. LaPointe, as well as our math coordinator, Mrs. Buscemi. We, are, we were very fortunate, as um, our colleagues mentioned over here, he was hoping to get one teacher at each grade level to volunteer to pilot the Houghton Mifflin. At both sides of town, it was overwhelming that it was a minimum of three and some four at each grade level who are now, and because he had such an overwhelming response, he is going ahead and allowing all of those teachers to participate. So they are going to be able to do this benchmark assessment throughout the year that's going to be able to keep track of the level, um, what level their students are reading and again, keep track of the student achievement. In that vein, we talked to Mrs. Buscemi to say we want to try to focus something in that direction for math for next year. So she is going to be working with the math vertical team in developing, again, a timeline and some benchmark assessments that we can administer <coughs> next year. And we really think that this is all this local data, in addition to the standardized data and the data we have from MCAS, is really going to help us to develop truly comprehensive student profiles and really help to inform instruction and help us to increase student achievement. So we're looking forward to that work with all of them, and um, we'll be hopefully have exciting news to share with you next year. <laughs> All right, now third goal on, in the technology theme, uh, to increase the use of technology for staff and students. The first activity we have there is um, we're going to be implementing the Study Island program in grades one and two in addition to grade three this year. Uh, Study Island is a program that we've used for the third grade students, but we had used a program called uh, CCC Success Maker in grades one and two. Uh, the program was good, but it was, um, it was a server-based program. We had to maintain all the data on our own servers. Um, the reporting was not very user-friendly, so teachers had a hard time kind of getting data, finding out how the students were doing. Um, so we're going to bring the Study Island program down to grades two and one this year. And the great thing about the Study Island program is it's a we, oh, we use it in math and, and English language arts. It's a web-based program. So students can have usernames and passwords. They can use it in the computer lab at the school. They can use it at home with their parents. Um, they, can, they can use it as often as they want to. Um, and the reporting features are, are wonderful. The teachers can see um, what areas, strengths and weaknesses, classroom-wide, and then individual students. You can go ahead and do a snapshot to see what the students have been working on, um, what the progress is, where they're lacking, um, what skills they need more, more emphasis in, and those kinds of things. So that's a great feature. Um, the teachers can also create individual assignments so that um, students, when they log on, they're not just picking random topics and, and bouncing around from one subject to another. They, um, the teacher can create an assignment so the teachers need, uh, students go in and they need to work on those particular skills that they, the teacher knows they need, they need extra work on. So it's a great program. The reporting feature, again, is great. It'll give us the teachers really helpful data to see uh, where the students need improvement. Um, also, again, continued use of the web pages and, and workshops. And the idea caught on. Uh, Mrs. Benton liked the idea. She passed it along to the other principals. And so all the schools have um, helped Mrs. Ippolito gather parent emails so that she can have that included in the database. Like we do alert now phone messages, we could use that database to contact parents through, the e through emails as well. So we've all been working towards um, helping her collect those and, and using that as, a, as another way to connect with the home. Uh, the last thing we have there, our MMS gradebook. In the past, our report cards at the elementary level were done by hand. 
Uh, and then last year we were able to do them electronically, but the report cards were saved uh, as individual files, individual documents on the teacher's uh, computer or on a flash drive. And um, so they were easier to do from the teacher perspective because they were electronic, but they weren't maintained, they, they weren't, the information wasn't stored in, in, a, in a database. So now we have, uh, with the help of uh, Neil Ellis, a technology crew, uh, he's put that report card into the MMS uh, format and um, all the, the grades, when the teachers log on now, they bring up a student's report card, they're actually entering information right into the database. It's stored and the report card, when it's printed, draws that information from those various fields and prints it out. And so now the specialists and all the different people that work with a particular student, they can all have access to that report card. They can enter information and um, it's, it's a lot more, again, user friendly and, and uh, it's storing the data in a, in a much safer way as well. So. Next. Mr. Dalt, one other thing, when I was talking about also the benchmark assessments that we're going to be doing, as we're moving forward with the response to intervention, this type of information and data is going to be accessible to students so as they bring uh, to teachers so that they're discussing students and student progress. They're going to have this data available so that as we move ahead with the process, it's going to give them the information necessary to present their cases. Any comments, questions? I would just say philosophically we are on the right page today. We're, we're on the page now. And on your chart, this is what I was waiting to see. Um, you put use data to match instruction for students, implementation of differentiated instruction as indicated. I think the term's just not been used. I think everybody is doing that. But um, I'd be interested to see how we're training, if there is professional development in differentiated instruction, I would really be interested to see um, what's being offered in that area. But that's the whole purpose of using the data, is to differentiate the instruction in the end. So um, thank you. That's good. One more level. Oh. Dr. Quick. Sorry. Um, She's freezing, too. I am. I'm very cold. <laughs> um, as the parent of a first grader, um, I, I had a question about the, the study island. Um, I know that, for example, we all received, the parents all received a, a little pamphlet about study island, yet I haven't seen, I haven't, you know, I have not seen it coming home to my, you know, I went online and I took the extra initiative to go on and try to find out a right. little bit about it. It was a little, actually a little confusing. But I haven't seen that initiative we, taken we, place we, yet. Is that? We backed off the timeline, of, you're correct. We backed off the timeline a little bit. Um, the feeling was that September day one was a little soon to put these first graders who were just, just coming out of kindergarten, mm -hmm. learning to read. Um, it was a little too much to put them in front of the computer and expect them to really to keep up with how to, how to navigate, how to answer questions, what a multiple choice question is, you know, how, to, how do I do this? So what we did is we had the information sessions we looked at the program and decided it was too soon. Um, it, we were gonna we're gonna give it maybe eight weeks, roll that out when the first graders are, are a little more computer savvy, have a little more experience in the lab, can understand how the program works. Second graders will be using it immediately. Third graders are already using it, but the first graders we're gonna we're gonna give them a little more lag time just to get more familiar with the program. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, Do we? Um, you may not know the answer now, but do we know how many um, <coughs> students? through all of our schools have computers at home? I think it's around 97%. Really? Okay. Yeah. And we do have computers. If anybody in the community is in need of one, um, Neil Ellis has some computers that we would we'd love to lend out to families okay. that don't have them. Wow, that's great. We do yes. tell parents that if, the, if that's an issue. And we, so far nobody's come forward, but I know, like you said, Neil's offered that, yeah. I mean, I would tend to believe that almost every household does, but I guess I never, yeah. never thought, you know, to ask the question and then mm -hmm. get your mind spinning as we make, you know, mm -hmm. capital purchases as a district. If we could ever negotiate perhaps, you know, possibly a special buy price for our students all the way through and so we can kind of say this is the recommended specs. You know, I know it's late, it's, you know, thinking outside the box, but maybe it's something to think about, you know, every year maybe we can get a special buy price for people that maybe want to you know, upgrade their system or whatever. Um, yeah. I'm in a situation where I have a first grader that I'm, you know, working with that needs a computer, for example, and mm -hmm. we're just kind of making that adoption into getting a computer just for him. Um, so I was just curious how many other parents are in that same situation that don't really know what their child necessarily needs 
you know, at that early age. Mm. It's good nail on it. Yeah. And just to <coughs> add in your comment, um, internet access, not everybody has Fios or Comcast or, or mm -hmm. dial up or whatever, so you know, getting onto the internet is also <coughs> another thing that we should, you know, take a look at if that's something <coughs> we're gonna go forward yeah. for community based purchasing, maybe negotiate something with Comcast or something to get, you know, educational use access to the internet or something mm -hmm. like that. I, I, I don't know. Tina Stewart, the director of the um, town library, has been also very helpful and, and does know which students mm -hmm. need to have the access to the technology yeah. and, and you know they have all those extra um, computers over yeah, the library. Yeah. I mean what's happening now is like some house like like my sister for example just put her laptop down and then the child gets on it but technically it's a corporate PC you know what I mean so people are using multiple users on one one PC it's not may not be you know I don't want to get off track but I just was curious how many people have a PC at home. Mm, that's interesting. Thank you. My last Last but not least. <laughs> exactly. Um, we, too, have a, a real collaborative effort. Um, but well and Wild, was, there is a long list of, of names up there, and we thank them. We were very lucky, too, to have a community representative this year. Um, Peg Powers uh, was our community rep um, for the duration of the uh, school improvement plan. Um, we're going to sort of piggyback on um, Shashin. Um, we're big into transition and smooth and successful transition and to use data results to inform instruction and to augment the implementation of the reading program. Um, there's always been a real need um, to provide teachers with a baseline for the kids that are coming in. Our little friends come in with a, really a blank slate, uh, not a lot of information. Um, and so we felt it was time to really explore the, um, the options that we had. Um, so the activity is, was basically to choose a standardized testing instrument, and we did that um, with the Dibbles. And we were very lucky to have training uh, in September um, for the entire staff on administering it and scoring it. Um, and then the teachers went back to their classrooms um, and administered the um, fall um, assessment, which is two subtests, um, very quick, about a minute each. Um, and now um, it's Erin's job and my job to um, enter that data um, into uh, the Dibbles data warehouse. Um, and from that, what we'll get for each teacher is um, a report. Um, and they'll be able to use that report to look at their scores. Um, and we'll do that on our next CIT. And that will be really the focus of it, is looking at the data, um, discussing it in terms of, again, differentiated instruction, um, our groupings in, in our classrooms, um, looking at the role of the reading specialist. And I think we're very lucky because the kindergarten model is the perfect model for differentiated instruction and grouping because of having a teacher and um, an educational <coughs> assistant. Um, so that's, that's what we're doing um, for right now. I think it's, it's a huge undertaking. Um, and from that, what we're hoping, um, we'll be able to do it again in the, uh, the uh, winter, uh, where we give four subtests, but again, very quick, about, about a minute each, and then in the spring. And it's a great time to do that, because those are the times when we do our progress reports. So it's going to help us, and it's going to assist us in evaluating the kids as well as we do their progress reports. Um, and again, looking at it again in, in terms of informing instruction, in terms of differentiated instruction. And we're very lucky too at, at our sites that we have common planning period, so we'll be able to generate the reports in the winter and the spring and look at them um, in great detail. Um, and last and probably the most important piece in the, and is to be able to um, share that information with um, the Shashin, the Shashin first grade teachers. Um, as much as we need the baseline data, and it's going to be important for us, I think the Shashin first grade teachers will benefit from it as well. So we're very excited. It was a very ambitious undertaking. And again, um, I, I can't say enough about um, the dedication and commitment of our kindergarten teachers. They just embraced this and, and ran with it. So um, we're very excited about it. And I'm really last but not least. <laughs> um, I'm going to continue to piggyback on the Woburn Street and Shashin 
uh, with our last goal, which is kind of an extension of our goal from last year, which is to, again, enhance student learning through the use of technology. And we're finally getting back to your question about um, creating an early search childhood engine. search engine, oh. um, <laughs> which I'll tell you all about now. I don't have to cross, I can cross now it you don't have okay. to ask. <laughs> uh, so our hope with creating an, an early childhood search engine is to, again, give parents a resource to help um, enrich and also support the teaching and learning that's going on in the classroom and especially for parents who are first time parents who may not have any idea of what resources are out there and available on the web um, creating this search engine which will work very similarly to google um, except it will be very specific to the batwell and the wildwood early childhood centers so together with um, the kindergarten staff both of us probably our principals, um, as well as Lisa Ippolito, our technology uh, integration specialist, will be working together to gather the resources that we need um, that can support and enrich the curriculum and then put them into a early childhood search engine so that parents can then go onto the search engine and Google, um, really, let's say um, phonemic awareness or a skill that their child is learning in school. And then several websites will, will pop up to be places where they can go with their child to, um, to further their learning in, in, uh, at home. So that's our first activity. Um, our next activity, again, to piggyback on the Shasheen and, and Woburn Street goals, um, is to continue to work collaboratively with Neil Roberts, our webmaster, to create an informative and up-to-date web page. Um, most of our teachers, not all yet, but we're hoping to move towards all of our teachers having um, web pages to continue that home to school communication. Um, the web pages that the teachers do have up, if you haven't already taken a look, take a look, they're fantastic. A lot of our teachers take the time to snap pictures and share those via the web, uh, the web pages, um, which is very fun to see what goes on on a day to day basis in some of the classrooms. And our last activity here is to explore new software and cross-curricular web-based programs that we can use at the kindergarten level because as you've heard from um, some of the other schools, programs like Study Island and things like that, um, there are web-based programs out there for the kindergarten level and now it's our job this year to again work with the kindergarten staff members as well as Lisa Ippolito to determine um, which websites are in fact appropriate for our kindergarten age students um, and which ones that we can look into uh, possibly pur purchasing down the road. And I think that's it. Thank you. I learned something about search engines. I had no <laughs> idea you could put one together like that. That's fascinating. That's, free. that's excellent. Even better. <laughs> exactly. Does anyone have Mr. Marchese? Uh, throughout all the presentations, I keep hearing the same word data warehouse, and, and I know what that means, you know, keeping the information. Has there been any talk or discussion, maybe, Dr. Miguel, maybe this is for you to take all this information and track children from the early childhood centers all the way through high school and see how they're progressing throughout the years and see if there's any increments or any, you know, a certain stage where kids are advancing they're slowing down or, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if there's been any thought to that or if any of these data warehouses can be really merged together. The response to your question is yes. <laughs> Um, Guess what it's yes to what? Was. Well, Too far question. well, the tracking and the following youngsters and, um, you know, between the data warehouse and then something we'll be hearing about in the next week or two, uh, the new growth statistics, which will actually measure students' progress, um, you know, from year to year. Um, rather than just determining how how high they're achieving, uh, proficient, advanced, et cetera, et cetera. So um, the warehouse is extremely powerful, and uh, it's going to allow us to do that exactly um, in terms of looking at student performance year after year after year. Okay. So do we have, like, a group of kids that we can, there's a certain number of years we can already track and see how they've done? Or you can do that with every youngster years? in the district. I'm sorry? You can do that with every youngster in the district. Uh, not from K yeah. because we don't offer our assessments or in the warehouse right now or, or begins with grade three. Okay. We do have the option and it's certainly a goal of ours uh, to begin to some of the assessments you heard here, Dibbles and mm -hmm. other K-1-2 assessments to upload that to the warehouse so that we can begin drawing on that, drawing on grades, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from report cards, okay. et cetera, et cetera. Excellent. All right, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, I want to thank you all for some great presentations, very informative. 
just have a couple of observations that I'm not sure if they really fit uh, totally, but I'm going to make them anyway because uh, this, these are things that I've expressed to uh, Superintendent Benton as sort of overarching, uh, not concerns, but issues that I, that I kind of would like to see emphasized more, and it affects curriculum and school improvement, so it seems like it sort of fits. But one of the things I'd like to, uh, and it's probably a big activity, but to see more emphasis on is, is creative and, and collaborative problem solving as an overarching um, uh, mechanism that, that the schools should be doing a much better job of doing when I think about any career, I don't care what it is, um, in uh, use of technology and everything else. Everyone, like you folks, are working in a team to creatively and collaboratively come up with some work product, and, uh, whether it's automotive mechanics to engineering to education, it doesn't, or healthcare, it doesn't matter. And um, I'd like to see that sort of, as additional additions of this come out and as continuous improvement is done, try and work some of that into, into the overarching goals of the curriculum and development. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, and, and Superintendent Ben also knows, is that, and it's a little bit related, but I'd like to see additional promotion of, of academic competitions. Um, and this came out of some ideas that um, I had sort of been brewing along, and then I was reading about a historic recrea a recreation of, a, of the first intercollegiate baseball game between Amherst and Williams 150 years ago, whenever that was. And Amherst, I forget the, I forget the exact story, but one challenged the other to a baseball game, and they said, fine, but in addition to baseball, we're going to play chess. right? And they wouldn't do it. Um, without having that chess competition at the same time as baseball, and it came under the the, the rubric or title of, of muscle and mind, and I don't know if there's I don't know if there are ways to push that or try and in incorporate those two broad and somewhat interrelated concepts into uh, curriculum and to the education portfolio and 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 ongoing efforts that the schools are doing at at every at every grade level. I mean, this is not something that sort of kicks in at any one particular time. I think kindergartners are just as capable of, of creative, sometimes more creative <laughs> problem solving, <Yeah>. right, <laughs> um, than, than, our, than our older kids. And certainly I think everyone loves a good game, and it doesn't matter whether it's um, uh, uh, you know, chess or, or, um, or football. It's a great way to end because it's a great challenge for all of us. And I, I'm thinking that maybe at the end of the year I'd love to come back because I can think of pockets of where we do, do that well but we need to expand on it as a team. So we will come back with some examples and ways that we want to um, move it forward. Thank you for challenging us. Thank you. And if you have a game in mind that you'd like to roll out that we could all play. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, like Jeopardy or something. <laughs> and just before we go, I'd like just to, to mention that I, I noticed on the, um, the um, actual committees um, I would like to see more teachers on those committees, and we won't even go into why they're not there, but um, I think that it's, it was originally, it was supposed to be as many teachers as parents, it was supposed to be an equal number. That's correct. And it's supposed to be 3-3. Three, 3-3, three. Three, three. Three. that's formula. what I thought. So I'd like to see, hopefully we can encourage more teachers to get involved even this year as we go on with working on the plan. Okay. Thank you all so much. Sorry to have kept you so late. But um, we really appreciate it. It gives us such an overview of the system, and, and it allows the public to see what a fantastic job you're all doing. And we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you for coming. OK. Um, let me see. Delegations. Do you have a delegation? None. <laughs> you're you're going to see the quickest Who ending of a meeting. We got someone here. <laughs> Well, that guy left. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. Um, board members, questions and comments? None, none. Yes, I'm Mr. Higgins. Uh, I'd like to thank our one audience member that did show up. If you come <laughs> on, thank you for showing up. Um, I, and, you know, again, to what Mr. Vale already said, thank you all for showing up tonight uh, for the presentations that you did give tonight. We all realize here that it's not just something that was thrown together to, to, to make the meeting go long. It's, it's something that happens every day, every week, every month, long days, weekends. Um, I, I really appreciate the hard work that goes into it. I know everyone here appreciates it. And I hope that anyone watching at home understands the type of dedication it takes to, to actually put together a report like this. And, and you know, it, it shows the leadership that you're giving at your schools with your teachers. Um, and and the um, 
the feelings that you're given throughout the schools because of the, the parents that do participate in these in these programs and, and to get that kind of response from the parents just shows you know what you are putting forth to the children so um, thank you very much for coming tonight thank you for what you've done and what you continue to do Thanks. 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 that's all uh, just a couple of things um, the Tagans, you pretty much said a lot um, in terms of the principal. I usually do that. Yeah, you do. You did a great job. <laughs> just, uh, just want to remind everybody on uh, October 25th and the 29th to uh, wear your pink shirts to school. You know, support breast cancer, and uh, also uh, support the rally uh, come this Friday where you're blue and white. Uh, also, I'd like to uh, reach out and thank Mr. Uh, Cripps for his 40 years on the track team. Thank you very much for your four years of service. Uh, I know Mr. Harrison will be calling on you from time to time for your advice, and. Um, and, uh, and, and also just, uh, just my uh, weekly uh, advice to everybody, keep up your hygiene and um, wash your hands. And, um, and that's it. Stay healthy. Thank you. Ms. O'Connell. I love this seat. It's perfect. <laughs> These guys take care of it all. So nothing over here. All, amen. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Quick. <laughs> oh, I'm passing. <laughs> And Mr. Veal. I'm, I'm good to go. Thank you. Okay. I just have, you'll be getting um, an email from me at some point when I get together. There is a new um, state state law. Mm -hmm. The Ethics Commission, we are going to take, I already did it. Mrs. Benton, she said it took her an hour. It only took me 45 minutes. I, I didn't read it all, but <laughs> I shouldn't say it. I shouldn't say that. Um, no, there is a, um, a test that we have to, we all have to take. And it's based on ethics, um, little um, scenarios. It gives you an explanation, gives you a scenario, and then you have four answers, whether you answer yes or no. They give you a question, and yes or no based on the scenario, is this an ethical situation or not? Um, it, I, I actually only took um, about 50 minutes for me to do it. But um, you definitely, you can leave it if you have to leave it and stuff. But I'll give you details on it. And um, hopefully we'll all be able to finish it by the end of October. So that will be something to look forward to. Yes, Mr. Vail. I actually do have a, uh, I have a request, actually, yes. if I may. Um, I'd like to request an update on the um, investigations into the threats to public safety mm -hmm. at the high school last year yeah. and then this year sure. um, at the next meeting. Absolutely. Um, I don't want to let that slide off our yeah. table yeah no that's great um and also i wanted uh, the walking the schools are starting um the walking will will they be doing that before our next meeting or can we just have the walk, an update walk with fitness the actually walk fitness. I'm, I'm pleased to announce that i think oh, excuse me one second okay <laughs> Can I call you right back in the meeting? <laughs> <You're on TV. laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, uh, we're going to be doing it, uh, uh, the walk, all, um, I believe, on the same day um, and invite children to wear costumes and connect it with Halloween. Oh, and everyone's had a I will have day. the information out to you by Monday. Okay. Oh, okay. And yes, we no, but it's to... but it's we we have another meeting before then. Right? Yes, yes, the twenty eighth. We do. So yes. I just wanted yes. to. Yes, thank you. Get Make people. it public on that day, mm -hmm. so we'll put that on our agenda. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay, no correspondence? None no, none tonight. All right. Um, our next meeting will be October 28th, and we'll have an Angie audit report. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Mr. Higgins. <laughs> motion to adjourn. Second. Mr. Marchese. <laughs> All those in favor. Aye. Good night, everybody. Thank you.